Welcome to the friendly Jimmy's pre-show. Hello. Hey. How are you this week, gang? Well, tell Stupendous, us. Stupendous, I'm guessing. <laughs> very, very good. None of us have the old... Uh, um, you guys know the drill, so ask, send us your questions for Jeeves, the so. pre-show. Uh, there's a lag, so they still don't know. I'm like, why aren't you answering uh. us? <laughs> Ollie, wear your hat properly. How about I just take my hat off? And what Oopsie. I'll do is... Sorry, actually, sorry, sorry. Hey, yes. Yeah, it's, it's f- I've almost got to my man bun stage. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he is close. Let's see if it works. Oh shit! Yeah. Just when you thought he couldn't get in, he can't here. <laughs> no wonder he's getting uh, auditions for watch ads. <laughs> oh wait! Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, whoopsie! Yeah, maybe that might be it, dude. No, I I'm telling you. Yeah, if you want Ali to start hawking anything from beard oil. <laughs> To stripy blue shirts. <laughs> no, I'm not he's doing. Just indicated to us that he's up for anything, and not necessarily <laughs> not in that true. order. No, not true. What I told these guys is that on my Instagram, it. I had put up a few pictures of me in Tasmania, and ever since I've put those up, for some reason, at least five, and I'm not kidding, at least five brands have offered to whatever the collab and model for them mm. they'll send me free shit if i just pose and that don't bullshit. even have that many followers I, on instagram so i don't know what don't the you reason think is that, uh when rap songs were talking about collabs the definition of the word was getting extended a bit too much then <laughs> but now a watch brand collabing with ali sitting on a pier <laughs> no. where's the creativity <laughs> you know what the collab means Collab just means uh, that we're not going to pay you for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and basically, oh, right, so we'll that's give crazy. you free yeah, just like shit. rap. Just like rap. <laughs> just like rap. Yeah, I don't know. It what's is bizarre. really strange that that's what collab means now. You interacting with an inanimate object. It's essentially the rod from The Simpsons. <laughs> hey guys, I I have to answer this because this is esoteric with the capital E. Is that how you spell it? Yeah. Yep. Adam Ray Double O. <laughs> Al Nico blue or green back for for a Vox amp. <laughs> it's really what preference you're after. I would personally go for the Al Nico blue, as I have just purchased a Jensen Al Nico P10Q 10 inch. Is it blue? It's green. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Sorry, I just saw that. that blue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Is this you what you it, were just? <laughs> True <Sorry>. words <laughs> never spoken about amps. Jordan, is this what you were just reading? Um, Sandy put up a, a chat thing. Breaking news, Friendly Jordan yeah. just has been announced winner of Comic Lounge 2021 Best New Show. Well, that is Come an honour. Round of applause. Thank you so much for this award that I did not know existed. <laughs> stop it, stop pissing. Let's be honest, that's Lo- all stop the shitting on it. You're, gonna get, that's, you're all going to get a <laughs> Logie anytime soon. So just, And if you want to we'll really it. commend Jordan for his splendid work, uh, then uh, become a patron of the Friendly Jody's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, so that's get money. <laughs> about six minutes into the broadcast. That's how you support him. Because you support him. He and how do you know I'm not going to win a Logie? I've got a contract with Channel 9 to restart Burjo's catchphrase. Shanko's catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, if you did that. Dude, inshallah, you I will would, win. Uh, I, I don't know what I'd do. I'd be like, well... You'd be the voiceover. <laughs> You'd be the person just saying like, and here's your host, Jordan Baby Shanks. <laughs> <laughs> just because I'm dressed like a 1950s car salesman doesn't mean I, <laughs> I am Batman. Here he comes. <laughs> and then like, today you've won a washer and dryer set from <laughs> Fisher and Paykel with a... With a culminative price of six hundred and forty nine dollars. <laughs> Be honest though, Miss Love. You are jealous that you are not that man. Yeah, I am. Who isn't jealous of that? You'd love that job, right? Being the voiceover to a game show. <laughs> you know what? Yes. Because that's a fuck all <laughs> job. It's basically like this. <laughs> so good. Less effort. It's less you believe it. And more money. That so guy yes, says like ten it. words a day. Yeah. That's why he's so fed. Amazing. Isn't that bizarre? That just, it is bizarre, but also, I'm so happy that that man's I'm alive. So happy. Question, do you, is he alive? Probably not. 
As you were saying, it's a dying. He did dress like a fifties car salesman in two thousand and four. <laughs> it's a dying art, isn't it? It's like <clears throat> um, when I was I was talking to a, a, an accomplice and uh, of sorts, and they were saying like, "Do you guys do you guys know how like probably up until the early two thousands, every single uh, every single trailer, the voice was exactly the same. It was all the like this summer, yes, yeah. greatest voice, Terminator two. Well, yeah, you actually, second you do greatest really voice well. after the voice over <laughs> Virgo's catchphrase, but a close second. Fair, 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 completely fair. Uh, anyways, that oh, guy wait. had a racket and the whole thing, and then he just died. And Hollywood was like scrambled. They were like, "What do we do? What do we do?" And, and like, their response was, "Hang on, we don't need a voiceover." Exactly. And here's my retort. Yes, you do. Yeah, I totally agree. How the hell? I don't, I'm sick of this shit. I'm just, movies just showing two thirds of the movie in the ad and it's just, you know, Hans Zimmer with like a cello being like, me, 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 and then some scene like, me, 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 like <laughs> can't we bring that it back to like, replace the voice? Can't we just bring it back to sort of like, Sally was sitting at home. Yeah. All alone. <laughs> yes. And she yeah, didn't we know. Dude, uh, can Casper we, the friendly look, ghost. As That's why Chucky movies aren't grossing as much anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. You can't sell Chucky without that voice. <laughs> so, yeah. What if a doll came to life? John, we've got a question <laughs> for you. Uh, the <laughs> audience, fucking sick movie, dude. The audience wants to know. Also, I may have figured out why you got that award. I think one of the people mentioned over here that may, if I'm not reading it incorrectly, <coughs> was on the um, panel that decided who gets the thing. He's like a massive fan. He even follows me on Instagram. Who? What? Dan Ellick, I think. That man did Dan, it? No way was Dan one of the expert panel of that. I don't, know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But like, if, if that's the case, he, he does. Dude, he knows me, so he definitely is a big fan of you. Uh, but I don't know about that. But he, here's the first, here's a question from the audience. Shanks, in your opinion, if Labour wins the next election, will the Labour government push for a royal commission into media diversity? Thank you, Jay Green, 2178. JJ. I can answer that in two questions, <coughs> uh, two words, and then we can move on to the next question. <sighs> Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Too afraid? And fair. Would you? Well, considering that the uh, the media lobby that controls the entire media landscape has never supported me and is like, for the first time after a very long time, is showing some support, I wouldn't want to piss them <laughs> off in my first year. Probably not a good move, seeing as Probably it results not. in a decade of opposition. Yeah. Saying one word against them, as we learned from the Rudd experiment. Just do what Albo did. Hey, remember Bob Hawke? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm not as handsome, but um, I do drink beer. Dude, and that's all you need. <laughs> works for me, and that's handsome. why he's going to be the next prime minister. The beers works for you, but the fact that he's not a silver fox does not work for me. It's hard right. to push that man. Well, no one's going to beat Hawkey. Yeah, you know Hawkey. Look, the thing is, Hawkey could have been James Should Bond. be going to Ali. They should be going to one of those Seiko sports watch models. That guy mm. should be the head of the Labor Party. Mm. Just he's probably just, like just beers. Get, just get Roger Moore in. Yeah, is he alive? I think he is. You know what to do? Playing at home. Is Roger Moore alive? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's dead. I think he passed I, away like in the fuck, last Fuck, maybe he did pass something. away recently. Let's see. Come on. As if no one knows who Roger Moore is. This is Twitch. I might as well have said like, who's Jerry Lee Lewis, you know? Mm. There's a We're lot not of, talking about Mr. Rogers. There's a lot of comments about, I don't know if you want to talk about, are you aware of what happened at the Yours and Owls festival over the weekend? No, tell me. He's we'll dead. We'll talk about it on the main he's pod. he's dead. Sorry, sorry, he's dead. We'll there talk about gone. it on the main pod, but <laughs> let's just say things got rough. Ooh. Yeah, awesome. let's talk about it. There's, a, happy. there's a preview. Mm. But yeah, in the Roger meantime, rest in peace, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's definitely dead. <laughs> I love Roger Moore. He was my dad's favorite. Dad's favorite Bond. When he flies the plane into the, uh, he's like, fill her up, fill her up please. Sorry, I am not going to be on the ball tonight. I'm very, I'm kind of deliriously ill. Yeah, so really I'm liking Ill. it more, I've got to say. He has corona. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's a scene in the movie. Mm. <coughs> All right, look, Winnie's uh, is charming and handsome. Yes, he is. <laughs> That's the point. I think you're thinking of that Mr. Burns scene of, <laughs> we can fly in the spruce moose. <laughs> you think that's Roger Moore? 
We were just so delirious. I'm just like, yeah, he said hop in. You're going <laughs> to save the day. We've oh, got two questions. Spruce boring girl says, why not make Tanya Plebiscic the leader <sighs> of labor? Boring. She'd be elected mum of the nation. Because elbow's mad. What's wh- Why is all this? I'm, I'm sick of the elbow hate. It's not elbow hate. I think well, it's two Tanya reasons. Love. The first one is that Tanya Plibersek is a lot younger than Anthony Albanese. So they're keeping her as an ace in the hole. But the second one is it doesn't matter who the leader is. Mm. Yes. Can we just get past that? <clears throat> what actually matters is angling. And the angling is Labour Party shuck. They don't drink eight many beers. <laughs> all right? And I don't think Tanya Plibersek does drink beers. I love this She has a lot of very small Turkish-esque coffees. And that would work really well if she was running for uh, Prime Minister of the Ottoman Empire. (laughs) But I'm pretty sure that's disbanded. (laughs) Let's let Chubba go. Look that up. Has the Ottoman (laughs) Empire disbanded? While you're at that, does Roger Moore rule the Ottoman Empire? (laughs) Double double check that as well. Uh, Lee, you're supposed to be the world politics expert. <laughs> yeah, that checks out. Yeah, it checks uh, out. We, we do have another comment. You're off the hook, guys. <sighs> this is uh, this is a very very intense request. First, he wants Australia to be a republic, and then he wants uh, K. Rudd to be the president for life. <laughs> <laughs> who who is this? Just a stranger? Like, oh, I, I missed it. No, yeah, like one of the uh, one of the viewers. Well, I'm sure your view is as important as. It's the most important view in the country. <laughs> Is that too much of a stretch? I know from talking to Kevin Rudd, he's probably listening to that and thinking, oh, not a fucking bad idea. Hey, that is not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. He's that, right, though. He's kind of right. He's mm. kind of right. I don't know about the Republic, though. I'm not sure about that. I, for one, am not necessarily for it. Yeah, me neither. Because to me, it just seems like it's almost symbolic at this point. And it's not symbolic. It's symbolic of, like, you like crumpets... So do we. Rancho Sauce is claiming that Kevin Rudd has a micro penis. <laughs> Possibly, I haven't. I seen mean, it. <laughs> all the, all the. I love how it goes from like his <laughs> his policies to just that. Like, like it's just, there's no fucking, just nothing in between that 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 jump. Yeah, and it's not even like, oh, did you guys know? It's more like, have you guys already discussed that? I missed it. His micro penis. It's so good that that's the discussion. Yeah, here. president for life. I don't know. His dick is pretty small. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are crazy. Hey, it's uh, four twenty, but uh, Ali, I'm sure you've blazed. Uh, not at the moment, but in my life, I have. Yeah, but you've had like seven joints today, yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't had. Maybe two. <laughs> yeah, look. I, and I His need life to, is 420. And I need to get some <laughs> weed, right? Is that well, What's the go with that? Where did you get your... I just remember <coughs> every time I've ever been sick, and the last time I was sick was maybe four years ago. I never get sick either. Mm. It's, yeah. But I was listening to a Snoop Dogg song deliriously, which has lyrics, smoking, smoking weed. And I thought, well, Might as well, he does feed Dr. Dre a lot, so he probably has some medical knowledge of what, what he's talking about. Yeah. I lit up, and I'm telling you, it was like a flaming mo for sickness. What? It just helped. That's insane. Would you do that now? Would you smoke? Would you smoke up now if you had a flu? If I had access to weed, and <laughs> let's be honest, I do because Ali is sitting across the table from me. But <laughs> smoke one of his fucking smoke his jumper. Dude, I actually I shouldn't say, but I actually have weed. I'm not even. Dude, kidding. have you got stavia? You are not shit stavia. That's what I want. Sativa. Apparently, s- sorry, sativa. We should probably not do this live. Ah, fuck. But it. just for the oh, record, I don't have it. I'm a consumer, not a seller. <laughs> no, what? Watch endorsement. <laughs> what? Watch endorsement. Sorry, gone. The camera wasn't even on me. That's it. You've lost your brand ambassadorship of yeah. that generic watch company. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> What was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I need to get some of that. Like, do you mean sativa? Yeah, because apparently that's the more chill one. No, so there's two. You, I think you mean indica. No, it's sativa. So sativa is the one. All right, guys. Not now, super hydro. It's like, no, yeah, sativa listen to is the, the one guy with the main bun. Yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> Jesus Christ, there's my hat. Um, I, sativa oh, is the one. Fuck, it gets worse. 
Fuck yeah. He keeps getting more hipster. Uh, How? He went from hat backwards to man bun to, hi, beer hat. Does anyone else do that? That's pretty quirky, isn't it? When's your yours and ours festival on? No, no, no. <laughs> the, the, the beer hat gets a pass. Stop it's not at me. that level It's yet. VB. It's, I a, like it's it. a national treasure. I think that, that passes. Yeah, it is. Be less proud of Bunning Snags and more proud of Victoria Bitter. But the people who no. are proud of Bunning Snags are proud of Victoria Bitter. You got to pick mm. one. It's like what you're always saying to me, Slav, about liking Alex Jones. You got to accept the whole package. Mm. Yeah. True, <laughs> true. All right, enough. No, no. <laughs> I'm done. What? No uh, more man bun. I have chosen the loser path. <laughs> Are you happy now? Sexy. Far out. Yeah, he tried to fit in with society, and society rejected him. <laughs> so he went to four chan. He went to Look nine at that chan. Look back. School shooter haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, so much hate. No, you're a very sexy man. Hey Ali, take your glasses off for a second. It looks wrong, doesn't it? He needs you have one you need glass like it just looks weird without glass. You look weird without glasses. It's because you're used to seeing me with glasses. No, but like you, a good point. No, no, it's like just, if tomorrow Jordan came in and he was bald, you'd be like, ah. Eh. I think I prefer you with hair. <laughs> That's true, but it's not too far away. Give me a <laughs> <laughs> no, but you just look blind without them. I am a little bit blind without them at the moment. Anyway, tell me about what weed to buy. Oh yeah, sorry. What I was Fuck. saying was like sativa is the one that <coughs> fucks with your with your mind. What so you the get hell? a head I, high? I just, indica is the one where you get a body high. I just got the opposite. Inf- I swear I got the opposite information. Well, okay, I'm no, no, no. You but a sure. body. <coughs> body high fucks you up way more. Like when I have when I had edibles, it yeah, was I hate so body high. intense. I can't do body high. You done edibles? Yeah, of course you <laughs> have. Man, I was the king of edibles. Bullshit. I probably shouldn't be revealing this, but man, Panthera, Panthera. Man, there are actually no. This is a good one. Was a good year of my life. I reckon after school, where I had a gap year of sorts. Man, oh man, did I get baked. You, you were a, a partaker of the weed, but I didn't know you partook in edibles. That's all I partook in. Was it our mutual And then friends? after a while, I remember sitting there with Torbs. <laughs> Shout and out. I was saying, I can't control <coughs> my brain. And he turned to me and said, yeah. <laughs> he liked it. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why dopamine. he went on to being a stoner for the rest of his life, <laughs> where I thought, mm, I do like the fact that when I have a brain that is functional, I can do my laundry. <laughs> <laughs> or anything else. Yeah. That's the that's problem heavy. with body highs and, uh, and indicas, in my opinion. Particularly edibles. Right. They just knock you they out. They kill you, dude. And then you can't do anything for the entire day. It's just not a fun. And the other thing is, if you partake in a... a can avoid activities, mm. then um, then you can basically like, you, you're pretty functional. But when you get that body high or when you do edibles, there's no on and off switch. You're just like done mm. for the next three hours. It's like doing acid or something. That's too much. Yeah. Commitment. So 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 this sativa or whatever sativa. I'm not a fan, but that's but that what they recommend <laughs> to people that are like trying to medically uh, that that want to have like <laughs> that want to have medical marijuana because they don't want the head high. They want like if they got like back pain and shit, they really just don't want their brain to be like super active. What they want is being like really relaxed. Or but then they can't walk to the fridge. That's the thing. It no, you can only walk to the fridge. That's the problem. <laughs> oh. You got motivation for that. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay. Uh, so I don't know what you're looking for. Why are you even? Why do you even want to smoke weed? Because Jordan told me to. I really think that it helps when you're sick. <laughs> no, well, I don't know. You don't know? I think being high is like being sick. Like, you yeah. Know, so I don't understand how that would Maybe help. you don't. Oh, I don't fucking know. Uh, look, he's... I mean, I your reason was you that you heard it. it. Go on. You, you, I mean, you did hear it in a Snoop song. It's not exactly medical advice. I go back to the fact that one of them's called Doctor. But <laughs> also... Yeah. I swear, you got any ailments or pains... Uh-huh. You're out of it anyway for those couple of True. days. It's the only time that I do recommend smoking weed if yeah. you are ill. Yeah. Because it's like That's it's it. Because you're gone it's anyway. It's a painkiller. Yeah. And on top of that, it kind of makes you forget that you're sick and then makes you do the thing that you want to do while you're sick, which is watch a bunch of shit movies. <laughs> I did watch The Big Lebowski on Sunday. Speaking of shit movies. 
I, I, I second that opinion because I never understood what Big Lebowski was about. It's, a, it's about stoners, isn't it's it? It's really about. It's, no, it's not uh, even. It's just. It's just a weird arty movie. It's it's, it's strange. I never it understood even that vibe movies. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I, know, know I never understood you. movies that like. Oh no, the movie isn't about how good the script is. The movie is about how good the vibe is. Yeah. I don't pick I up on vibes. Into that. What about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? That's a vibe. Yeah, but that is a vibe. That's a but it was vibe. also it's a good entertaining. Vibe. Yeah, it's a good vibe, but True. it's also That's entertaining. Thing, yeah, a bad vibe movie is a bad vibe. No, True. but like apparently hipsters will love that shit. Yeah. Like The Big hipsters Lebowski, really I think, is an average movie with like, I guess, the vibe that I didn't particularly, I wasn't too keen on it. I thought it was okay. But but look in the great. comments. I bet you this is the response. When you trash the Big Lebowski, you are inundated with hundreds of comments of, oh, but the dude, yeah. the dude. Yeah, the dude. Yeah, the dude, I, I, the dude I, sucks. He doesn't suck. Why doesn't he suck? Because it's the Tao, Tao of the dude, dudism. Because he's just, he's just a, a chill dude. He's like a... Yeah, but we you, don't need you to write any comments anymore. That will be the response. Yeah, yeah but like, yeah. Be, uh, you are a chill dude as well, Miss Love. I think that that's what I was that's saying. I'm like, like this guy's onto something. Not uh, working. Cohen <laughs> Brothers are <laughs> greater than Tarantino. I don't think that's the case. <coughs> Marilini says, well, it's just easy watching Brad Pitt. And you know what? I agree with him. Not that. wrong. He's <laughs> yeah. easy on the eyes. Frankly, not hard to watch Leo as well. Two hunks. Yeah, but like, uh, remember when, in Once Upon when Brad Pitt was on that roof and mm -hmm. he was shirtless? Yeah. I'm a man and I remember that scene. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just like... But also, that was a funny scene. Was why it? was it funny? No, 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 it wasn't funny. remember how he just has this memory of why he got fired? Oh, that's oh, right. And then it cuts back like 10 minutes later. He goes, yeah, probably a fair. Does he and like he kill his wife? Fixing it. He like kills his wife or something? Is that what you're talking about? That's in that memory. That's right. That's how much the memory is a distraction from the show. And I hate how all the movie critics are saying, it was unnecessary. Why did you need it? I'll tell you why. Because more Brad Pitt is good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude, Brad I Pitt. love that movie. I really did like yeah, it. Because it's all it style. Work. I think it's up there. I, I think it's up there. I think it's up there with his best. Like, it's, it, like but, it, but, it, but it is a vibe movie. There, nothing mm. really happens. Mm. Anyone that says Inglorious Bastards is his best film doesn't spend enough time on 4chan, right? <laughs> but that is a good movie, but too. Did you, did you, <laughs> Jordan, are you a big fan of Seven Years in Tibet? Don't know what that the is. The hell is that? But, uh, it I haven't sick. seen it. I came very close to watching it the other night, but I was like, yeah, no. Nah. Is it more anti-China propaganda, is it? <laughs> well, it probably is. Mm -hmm. But, like, but, uh, but before it was cool to hate on China. <laughs> like, I respect <laughs> that kind of propaganda because it was like, it's it's real. Like, it comes from within. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I actually don't know. Maybe it's not, but it's it's about him going to Tibet and finding, like, his soul and shit. Basically, a male's version of Eat, Pray, Love. Fight Club, no. That sounds really lame. Why? <laughs> I swear you're Brad Pitt. <clears throat> Like you, you would want to go to Tibet. You're constantly talking about how you want to go to Bhutan all the time. He's exactly the same thing. And I do really want to go to Tibet and find myself, so. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I can't knock this feel. Yeah, don't yeah. pretend. All right, it's better than um, Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> the movie you've never seen. But actually, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Pulp Fiction, don't know which one's better. Which one? Uh, I'm tossing it up. I don't think... I don't know. Hate for late. <laughs> yeah, look, hey, you know, he, I, I really didn't like Django. I thought Hate for late was like watchable. Django was my favorite. <sighs> so entertaining. What are you talking about? I just thought it sucked. I don't know. I just yeah. thought it was lame. Look, you, I think Kill Bill... you vibe and I'm all about like, I don't know, a good messages. narrative. Yeah, good's a stretch. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, did you hate the fact that like it was all about black empowerment and shit? No, I just hated the fact that it's like, we're going to cram as much Jay-Z in the soundtrack as possible. That's historically accurate. It's, not <laughs> it's just I thought it was lame. Rick and I thought it was Ross, not Jay-Z. Whatever, dude. And John Legend. Wow. Yes, King. Anybody that gives themselves the stage name John Legend <laughs> Has must to be, be a legend. Good. <laughs> uh, Some I, guy is saying there's a, a Bollywood guy. version of Fight Club. I have seen that version. <laughs> <laughs> Give and, us a rundown. Oh, oh dude, shit. it's so shit. First of all, it's nothing like Fight Club. I bet it's better. I bet it's better than Fight Club. <laughs> it's about like, oh, I can't remember what it was, <laughs> but it was like five dudes who really don't look athletic enough to fight. 
sit down and they start like a fight club but it's got nothing about corporate power and alter ego and mental it's more like they started a fight club and then they beat up some like rich guy and the rich guy's older brother came in to beat the <laughs> shit out of them i and like it in more. the end it sounds better they told the the uh, the, <coughs> uh, the the dangerous rich guy that look your brother was being a bit of a dick and the brother was like wait i didn't know that <laughs> were you being a dick and he was like yes i was brother and he was like Go on, beat him again. And that was the end of the movie. <laughs> Bollywood rules. It does rule. <clears throat> Can we rename it from Bollywood to Povywood? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's so everything so about it is just uh, watching a Hollywood film and you having the same idea when you were eight years old that I could remake that and then yeah. making on a shaky handy camera and being like, hey, why is this worse? And just but you a know, lot more dancing for no reason. Yeah. But you know, like reason. Bollywood actors <laughs> regularly talk about like how film directors would come to them and they would say, I've got the perfect movie for you. And they're like, okay, where's the script? And they give him a DVD of Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, watch it. Nah. And they're like, okay. Yes. And then they give them another DVD. And we'll say, that's the second half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's perfection. That's perfection. Like, and this is not even a joke. That's like a serious thing. That's like, they were like, for the longest time, they wouldn't bring us scripts. They would just bring us DVDs to watch. Oh, that's so good. I mean, like, do they have the Lord of the Rings called, like, <laughs> Lord of the Henna? No, uh, they don't have that too high budget for Too high budget? Too high so they budget. have none of those period pieces. Shot in cashmere. Mm. They do have some period pieces, but those weren't on plagiarize. You, sh- you should think of think of it from this way. People that like to plagiarize are really lazy. <laughs> and they would <laughs> rather pick a movie that's like, you know, uh, how mm. about we do Ben Hur again? No, how about we do Twelve Angry Men where they sit in a room? That that sounds more like it. All right, like, yeah, okay, fine, yeah. we'll do that, dude. Twelve Angry Men, where's the hot chicks? But then you know, the, even the even the Bollywood actors were lame. Like their metrics for choosing a film weren't like, oh, is it a good DVD? It was like filmed in India. Fuck off. <laughs> they, they like want to be like they want the movie to be film filmed in like London, Switzerland, and shit. So yeah. they just go over and have fun. Don't so they just live there anyway? Nah, they still live in Bombay. <laughs> Why would you do that if you were one of the richest people on earth? No offense. I w- well, the richest no, person no. in the world lives in Bombay. Well, Is not that the, true? Not the, no, no, Elon Musk doesn't live there. My question still stands. Sorry. Why? Uh, it's probably nice Don't areas. Don't you think that the sewers underneath Sydney <sighs> would be nicer than that Bombay? They'd be I, less shit. I, I look, I haven't <laughs> been there, but I will stick up for them. I'm sure it's not that bad. (laughs) What? I'm sure it's not that bad. I wouldn't go. I don't know, man. That whole area is a little (coughs) iffy. I would. Hey, hey. I read that. Bombay is very close to Karachi. (laughs) 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 That checks out. (laughs) But Uh, again, look, it was the only time that I will agree with Miss Love's usual summation of every subject that we ever discuss, but. When it came to Karachi, I'm going to have to take his position on it. What did I say? It's funny, but that shouldn't be the only criteria. <laughs> now, for Miss Love, there is one criteria, which is non-existent with Jordan. Right. Which got great food. What? Uh, soul. I'll that's move it, that that's now. the it's only really thing in Karachi, honestly. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, well, I, there, there's going to be that. Everything ah, is. I wish I came. I wish I came. I'll now. I'll never know what biryani tastes like. Do you know there is ah. like a, a health epidemic, and like some uh, some doctor was explaining it to me in Pakistan. Yeah, in Pakistan, like in, amongst the rich of Pakistan, everyone seems to be like getting heart disease and shit. And he was he was explaining it to me this way. He lard. was like cooking in lard. Our our diet is not is 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 not conducive for like an athletic person. It was like, what do you mean? He's like, look, back in the day we were all poor. So and we would usually have to like do a lot of agricultural hard work. Some so American we developed country. a cuisine that was really fatty and high on carbohydrates <coughs> because we needed it. Mm. But now we don't. We just sit there but we're still consuming the same food. So yes, we we will all die very soon. <laughs> what and what? also, as you pointed out when we were there, and we were saying vegetables, we want vegetables, <laughs> and all the chefs had to specially make it. And he'd be saying, Ali would be saying to them, "Yeah, yeah, they need to have vegetables. They're white." And he'd be like, "But why would they want to have vegetables? That is commoner food." <laughs> yeah, that's the other that's, thing. That's like, the perspective. Part of the hospitality is like. Oh, I'm not going to serve you vegetarian food. You're very important to me. I'm obviously going to get you, like, like sometimes if they want to show really, if they want to be really hospitable, you would go to some people's house and there would just be an entire goat, goat 
being like roaches. Like that's how Hell they yeah. must they appreciate you that there's not even <coughs> rice here. It's just meat. Damn, someone really needs to tell them that it's not the Middle Ages anymore. Yeah. What is this animal on a spit roast as a celebration? I mean, that's a Croatian thing as well, but they don't have goat, they have lamb. This is what they do in Croatia, in the hills, in the mountains. And I'm a big fan of this. But obviously, like, the more you retreat into the mountains, the more unhealthy the food gets compared to the coast because the coast is basically Mediterranean. Peish. Just beige and, like, and you know. And squidere. Squeets. Um, <laughs> I'm just translating the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Squidery means squid. <laughs> um, so, like, but I, I specifically remember <clears throat> going to the mountains of Croatia. Uh, very similarly to, to, to you, they don't serve bread or any carb. They give you a salad, which is just tomatoes with salt and olive oil and raw onion. That's the, that's the salad. And then they'll, they'll cook, there'll be a pig on a spit at the top and a lamb on a spit under it, both turning. And, and the thing is like, the pig fat drips on the lambs. It makes it extra tasty. And then they just chop up the lamb and give it to you like on a plate with some, like basically with some tomato. But is it mad? Is it it's really good? so good. Yeah. It's dancing. so good. I once had this, and I'm not even. Kidding. It was a, it was a goat biryani, but the goat was stuffed, and I'm not kidding. Oh my god! The goat was stuffed with ducks. The ducks inside the goat <laughs> were stuffed ducks. with chicken. Plural. Yeah, like a few goats because the goat's big, and then those chickens, which were sh- stuffed inside of a goat, no. were stuffed with eggs. Uh, Wasn't expecting eggs. Thought quail. They let me down. Uh, <laughs> that's that one more animal. It's pretty damn decadent. That is, that's too fucked for me. Yeah, but the, but again, the point of that, that's a show oh, dinner. That's not like, ooh, this particular combination of animals makes it really it's tasty. Just, yeah. It's more like, I am willing to spend this much amount of money in your honor. It's flexing. Yeah, it's flexing. It's meat flexing. Now, uh, you, your son will marry my daughter. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Shit like that. Fuck. Well, when we were there... <clears throat> Ali was hanging out with some of his dad's friends and they took us to a nice restaurant. And I admit it was nice, but as always, two and I were looking like <coughs> two anemics that lived on a desert island. <laughs> so we were saying, please, can we have some vegetables? And then Dude. he was saying that and there was a translation. Of, Ali, is your friend a homosexual? <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah, it's true. He's oh like, yes. He, he, yes. He's like, why, did, why does he keep asking for vegetables? <laughs> you know what the best thing about that is? Like, I don't know the answer to that either. I, yeah, you don't. I know. <clears throat> like, I know this man. And, oh, like, seeing Jordan without vegetables for a day would be like seeing a wild gazelle in the nature like, like i don't know seeing a tasmanian tiger in nature would just be like <gasps> like i even i can even me now i'm like two days three days i'm like i need to hit me up i need some fucking broccolini or bok choy or you know some sort of lettuce like salad this man needs it like more than needs air i would love That's to i reckon i would have loved to have seen you just sort of like sickly just like cowering over with like a giant <laughs> plate of like goat next to you, just be like, I can't do it. I don't know why. I just, I just think that it would be was very to that. see it. It, it was, was that. Was that. it? And I was how sick you are. No. In Pakistan, so I was also shitting my pants <laughs> while being sick. Are you serious? Yeah. And my biggest struggle was <laughs> Mislo. Fuck. The biggest problem that I faced was Holy that the shit. only kind of vegetables Pakis consume is like a little salad that they give you with all that meat, right? So the yeah. salad usually has usual suspects. Cucumber, yeah. onions, and tomatoes, right? And it's kind of like... And it's it's fresh cut. It's not cooked or anything. And it's it's like a novelty salad. Yeah, but they give it with like all of the meaty stuff right. that no one ever touches. Yeah. But it's there. And the problem was that he wasn't no allowed to eat... No one He, okay, he wasn't sorry. allowed to eat that. Why? Because they usually wash it with tap water just before. So the only kind of vegetable... I ended up giving up at the end. I was like, just, just... Just eat it because, like, you need some food in oh your belly. Oh my god, I didn't know. So, you just tortured yourself. You were on like Survivor, Survivor Pakistan. It was the best trip I've ever been on, <clears throat> but 
as the beginning of that Dick's, <laughs> Dickens novel states, like it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. <laughs> That's Pakistan. The road less travelled. Yeah. If you and will. it is the road less travelled because everyone goes to India. Yeah, of course. You want to be a man, you try to go to Pakistan and eat goat for 10 days, all right? Ironically, have an apple India, and Mandarin every day, Tim Chuma. That actually was how oh, right. Jordan survived. We oh, figured fruit. out we can get him fruits, mm. <clears throat> and we did get a lot of fruits. Ironically, and if they you were went to India, it'd just be lentil curries all day. You'd be like, yes, the it fittest man in India. Mm. But I still really like that you went for it, and that's really cool. Anyways, look, where uh, l- let's go on a quick break. This was the end of the pre-show, so we've answered all their questions. Yeah, that's what Pakistan's <laughs> lot. But we'll come back with the main pod, and that's what I saw. Some people were saying, why do you keep referring to Uplate as the main pod? I'm referring to what's going to follow after the pre-show as the main pod. Mm. And we will discuss all of that, you and whatever, me and Al, whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, yeah, me their and Their festival Al. and their mishaps. You and, and me Gregor. and Al. And a lot more of the uh, news, uh, like some news topics and stuff. So but we'll before s- we go out, say Nizzle, I think summed up what we were talking about best when he said, veggies are for pov cunts. <laughs> True words have spoken. And if you're my dad's friend, homosexuals too. <laughs> you must be 18. Howdy, y'all. Welcome to the Friendly Jimmy's podcast, <laughs> That's where we're going to start off with something that I got sent yesterday uh, by Bandwagon, who is a regular listener. Um, so this happened today at, uh, not not today, whenever they're uh, the yours and whatever, the yours and Al's festival. What did you was. call it before? Me and Al. Yeah, me and you <laughs> festival. <laughs> the me <laughs> and you. Scroll through you. these pictures. But basically what Jordan's looking at is like, a bunch of kids being bashed up at the festival. Hey, but the security guards were wearing bucket hats, so they're chill. <laughs> and these Where? chill bucket hat security guards are pushing some guy's face into the ground. Whoa, can I see? That's wild, dude. You've really- i got to ask, though. Assaulting this kid just straight out punched him in the nose. What the fuck? I didn't know Christo went to yours. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it amazing... That whenever this happens, <laughs> uh, delayed, delayed reaction, <laughs> and it's not even the thought of Christo getting punched in the nose that just happens regularly. Yeah, that's, that's a <laughs> it's the thing. thought of him at yours and out. <laughs> I just feel like I don't know who even plays it anymore. I, well, he's just such a conservatorium music true, snob that true, the true, fact true. that he'd be sitting there being like reverb pedal, yeah. please, Frank Zappa, where's the Chicago? Yeah, yeah. But are you surprised that people <clears throat> get beaten up at yours and owls? Whoa. Dang. Is that fake blood? No, that's real blood. I'm going to see this. <laughs> it does look like strawberry jam, but... Is his eye bunged? Oh, Jesus. I don't know. I don't know the dates. I just saw the pictures, and they look pretty horrific. God, look at that cunty guard. I see. <laughs> he looks so proud of himself. <clears throat> Uh, what I can do is, if Bandwagon allows, I'll edit these pictures yeah. uh, for the YouTube cut of this What's podcast. What's Bandwagon? Bandwagon is a person. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I thought it was like I'm taking app. her name because I bet because you it is a really pov Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. With a oh. grand total of 60 band. Uh, so, you, Jordan, you just, just describe it roughly for them. Some guy got punched in the face and there is a security guard who I'm imagining his name is Zemedvedev and <sighs> <laughs> he seems very chuffed with the fact that he just made a guy's eye bleed. Dude, yeah. that's brutal. Is that a common occurrence? Because I don't go to that many no. festivals. Is it, that's no. Not right? is no. It a, no, that's not a common occurrence. That's it's a common be. occurrence at clubs. Well, and, and it should be. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and it should be a very common occurrence in Newcastle. Yes. See, I, that's what you'd expect. Like, yeah, that yeah, should yeah. happen in Newcastle. That should happen in Newcastle. That should happen in any club in the world, but not a festival festival that is quote-unquote promoting chill vibes in Wollongong. Like, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a little bit more. And look, oh, you know. Bandwagon is actually Bandmole, but I swear your name on Instagram is Bandwagon. Bandmole's yeah. better. Bandmole, Bandmole. But, um, dude, like, yeah, that's that's a bit hectic. I mean, I don't know <laughs> if we can exclusively pay, at, you know, blame the, the organisers, but because, you know, t- you can't vet all security guards. But let's just do that anyway. Yeah, no. I think you're right on this one, and, this love. And, <laughs> and as the Chinese very wisely say, a fish rots from the top. 
Does it though? Took me a moment to figure out what you're saying, but I also agree with that sentiment too. <laughs> right, right. Wait, a fish rots from the top. Yeah, what does that mean? It means that if there's something fucked up happening, but a fish, it's, it's starting at the top. But a fish doesn't rot from the top. Well, maybe Look, Chinese it's poetic, fish do. Right? Like, okay, what's I'm wrong sorry, with I'm you? Sorry, I'm Jesus. You, your anti-Chinese <laughs> bias is like, but it's not even true. Fish it's don't even rot. Aren't you a musician? Aren't yeah. you supposed to be into things that aren't factual and just sound cool? <laughs> I did biology in high school, man. I learned about osmosis. I, I want to fish, fish rots from the inside out, uh, the top down. Oh, a fish rots from the head, I think. is the, But either way, top, yeah. top head, whatever. who cares? <laughs> you feel all knew what you meant. Okay, so I we, did it. Let's yeah, start sure. off with our first <laughs> news story slash segment for the day. This is a light one. So Actually, we before we get into that, can I just say... If you have more dirt on yours and ours, send it to me because a lot of people have. And yours and ours, if you're watching, and I know that you won't because you're fans, but you just don't watch any of my content, uh, you should be scared. <laughs> you should be very, very scared because my story is not uncommon and it is by no stretch of the imagination the most fucked thing these people do. But let's continue on with the show. Damn, yeah, that's they a, have been me too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a great me tooing the me tooers? Yeah. So nice. For sure. For sure. Me, me. All right. Well, how about we keep that for like me the, the main vid if it actually does come out? But I feel like you've <laughs> you've 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 killed them. You reckon? You don't have to be like fucking Genghis Khan and be like, now we shall kill the entire <laughs> family. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that is how they refer to their employees. They're that kind of a company. We're a family. Uh, Are you actually from Wollongong? Not by a stretch. Damn. Mm. All right. Okay. So <laughs> now this is a story mm. which is, and it's kind of, uh, it's close to my heart because <coughs> I care about, as you guys know, old people. I care about old people in aged care slightly more than you guys do, but there's I this. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was a thing. And how could you <laughs> like old people more than this man? No, but like I care about the whole. I don't know. I don't know. I always want the to golden bring it up. generation. But anyways, like you know, so there was this uh, uh, Abishai investigation um, that revealed that a Greek Orthodox bishop connected to an aged care home where forty five people died from COVID was like living a very, very lavish lifestyle. So he was basically stifling money off of from, from that aged care. So $31 million were funneled by the church away from aged care homes, which then were reported at losses. And St. Basil's aged care sir, were serving like party pies and sausage rolls for dinner. And he was basically showing that the aged care was in heavy losses while like living a pimp ass life. How do you think you're going to get away with $31 million? It must be like when you have a job at Hoyt's and you first start out by stealing a couple of Skittles packets and then you start stealing $400 a week. And I'm not incriminating anyone here apart from Torbs who did exactly that and worked at Hoyt's. But I think that's just what happens. You figure out the system and then you push it way too far. But don't you think even funneling $20 million is a bit... Just take it, like one. people. That's not really a rounding error, is it? But you know, like, okay, I know this is this is a very fucked up opinion of mine, but I'm not even too concerned about like ooh, funneling the money. I'm concerned about where you're fucking funneling that money from. Like, if someone figured out like this hack where they could get like every dollar on uh, I don't know like uh, venture capitalist acquisitions and shit, go all for it. Well, that was our maths teachers in high school. Miss yeah. Oh or my even, God. You know, Can we talk about that? Well, just replace the word uh, computer whiz with fat Croatian man <laughs> and venture <laughs> capital scheme with public school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's oh all we need God. to know. Go on. Yeah. yeah but, but, like, but, you know, yeah. even if well, it's like, you know how like travel agencies, and I know this uh, for a fact, travel agencies, if they get corporate clients, they make sure that the air <laughs> ticket is like around the world. They find the most expensive one so their cuts higher mm -hmm. uh. because corporations don't care because they've got budgets for travel. So like public, I, I'm, look, obviously that's bad and everything, but I'm okay with that happening. I'm more concerned when like you're funneling $31 million and you're like feeding really old people sausage rolls. As mm. much as a f I'm a fan of sausage rolls. Yeah, the meat pies But at the same bad time, part yeah, party pies are all great. <laughs> but for children, for like really old people, that is most likely not ideal, um, you know, 
nutrition. Were they Greek Orthodox? Yeah. Well, without sounding extremely racist. <laughs> this is a very niche Christian sect, which I am not part that of. That is Hence, I will blame it on uh, the bishop. The, 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 and haven't we yeah. learnt the lesson, beware Greeks bearing gifts still? <laughs> is that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> this is ancient wisdom. Are you kidding me? Probably older than that Chinese quote. Oh, the, the, <laughs> top, of the top of the top of the fish rods, yeah. Holy crap, yeah. Greek Orthodox. They are a crafty bunch. Are they a crafty bunch? They don't save it. They Sorry, seem- what I meant to say is they're <laughs> not a crafty bunch. Yeah, That's I don't think so. I, I, How many cement lions do you need? So much I honest, It's not even about the Greek <laughs> Orthodox or like this particular person. It's, it, I think it stems from like basically our politicians like giving up and not giving a fuck about aged care. That's Just true. as a sector. They, they'd rather give it some money and be like, all right, you know. No one cares about old people in this country. And that's what I mean when I say that this is something that's kind of close to my heart. Labor cares. Labor cares cares. more, for sure. But I think this is more of like a society thing, too. You know, we're Mm. obsessed with young people. Even when COVID hit. It's a Western All I could hear was like couples talking about, oh, I wish I'm so worried for my fucking infant. And like, your infant's going to be fine. Your kids are going to be fine. It's affecting really old people. Like, how come I never hear you be like, what about my grandma? Like, they're like, whatever, like. It's a she lived her problem. life. It's a, it's a lame Western problem that we've that we've somehow e- e- imported from America. Like in America, they just shelve their old people like you know, <clears throat> Toy Story toy paraphernalia in like in <laughs> essentially like cardboard boxes, just giant, <laughs> giant like Blade Runner esque pods, and and it's like shameful to to have them in your house. So like, I think it's so lame. That's what's cool about Europe and. And Italy and stuff are just like, yes, Giuseppe lives on the top floor. My grandma's in the basement and the 10 families in the main house. Like, damn straight. Yeah, it, it is, is a the, my favorite problem. feature of Two's house, my girlfriend. It's great, isn't it? It's the fact that she has a grandma in there that can't speak a word of English shuffling yeah. around. Banoi. Boiling rice. Yeah. If I may. Banoi. Yeah. And my only interaction <coughs> with her is, hello, Banoi, to which her response is, mm, hello. <laughs> <laughs> But don't you That's think it's, nice. it's that I agree with you that like old in the West we don't respect we don't have respect for old people. Yeah, but it also like it is tough because look, I have a grandma that lives right next door. She's like over close to a hundred. Um, respect, and dude. she is. It is very difficult because old people, every part of their body hurts. They are not in a good mood ever. Like this happened legitimately yesterday. So I go to my grandma, right, and she's complaining about how my auntie is basically abusing her. Because she would never buy him a new toothbrush. And she said, my toothbrush, it's so old. There's basically anything, any Jesus. brush left on it. So I was like, oh shit, that's bad. She so I go it. and I get a toothbrush. And then I bring a new toothbrush for her. And she's like, oh my God, thank you. And my auntie told me, do you know what the problem is? I have bought her several toothbrushes. But because she's so old and almost blind, she always uses it the other way around. And she's like, it's done. And then she would throw a new one. It's like, I want a new one now. <laughs> and that's pretty much just, that's the thing that she, like even oh today, God. this this uh, her caretaker is this uh, Filipino lady. And she's so nice. She's like, does, you know, it's, I thank her every second. I was like, oh, you're, you're taking care of my grandma and you're doing all of this shit work. Thank you so much. But my grandma's always like, not talking to her nicely. She used to not be like this, but when you get really old, you stop giving a shit. Mm. And there's a whole communication barrier between them because my grandma does not speak a word of English. To be fair, neither does that Filipino lady. She speaks Filipino and my grandma speaks Urdu. And she's at some point, she's looking at her and going like, basically in Urdu like, bitch, what the fuck are you even saying? <laughs> and I was laughing. That <laughs> is a sitcom. I would watch that. If you live streamed their whole lives, I would watch the shit out of that. Baby, my point is that it is <laughs> difficult. Like old people can, they become worse. <laughs> so much but, but more annoying to hang out with. That's true. But Just but take some Simpson wisdom of, um, we're going to ship you off to an old person shop. You already did. Well, we'll ship you off to one of the bad ones, like in 60 minutes. Oh, be good. <laughs> no, I'm got to threaten them. It's good to no, have. You, don't no. have to them. you just have to. Take I don't know them. how good they have it. No, you have to take it. I mean, I have to say, I used to teach art at an old folks' home, and I tell you, that's the sweet life. Three square meals a day, all of them party pies. Sit in front of the TV, watch McGonagall till all the hours of the day. You get jelly, 
It's a nice what, what do they item. watch? Is it Murder She Wrote? Yeah, that kind of stuff. The Beal. Uh, a lot the, of cop shows. Um, what's that one called? MacGyver. You know, all the good stuff. <laughs> Anything with a detective that has a moustache. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if they're saying, well, this is all curious and in it, or eh, <coughs> Florida's a pretty good state. Yeah, all of those. But, you know, it's <laughs> not that bad. That's just from my experience. But don't you think, like, is there any way, and I, now I'm making it slightly political, you know, when Bernie Sanders first came in, which I think the theory doesn't work because he never won, but one of the things that I really liked about Bernie Sanders, because he was such an old fuck, he understood old people's problems. Uh, so he would he would be talking about stuff like um, uh, people not being affo- able, like old people not being able to afford uh, insulin shots. So they're rationing insulin shots. That's and brutal. saying like old people need to like die with dignity and they don't have the kind of money, all that. Do you think most old people, if they vote, they would vote liberal, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Is there a way for Labour Party... To like get them on our side, it has two effects: one, better electoral uh, consequences, and secondly, dude, I think they deserve it. They deserve some help. Sure. I don't know if you're going to be able to explain monetary policy to people that don't know how to use toothbrushes. <laughs> but you know, I did, I did. I, I, that's that's true. But I did have a discussion with one lady who was. I tried to get her because so. I go, I take my dog out for a walk every day at like this little park. It's called Kent, I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> but like it's, Kent it, park. It, it's funny, <laughs> f- f- Kent Park. It's funny because it started off as a natural reserve because some guy in World War II was supposed to go over like across the harbor to like uh, shoot Japanese ships. But he just like fell <laughs> right near the barracks. Oh, that's probably not a good thing. But like, so they made a national park in his, uh, in his honor. But All anyways. Right, but one of the things that happened is that they they opened this new golf resort, and I'm, and the golf resort which is just borders this national park, and it almost it encroaches into the national park, and so I take my dog after a walk every day in the national park. So we just sort of like walk side by side to this like really nice golf course, and the guys are always just like, "Hey, can you hand me the ball, yo, champion, champion? What breed is that dog? Yeah, sick. Oh, so they're that guys. Yeah, my dog's great. Okay. But I met this one old lady, right? And it is a hard way. It's a hard walk because there's no pathway. It's much more difficult for older people. And this lady was saying, uh, she looks at me coming out of that fucking bush, essentially, with my dog, trying to wipe spider webs off of me. And she says, my God, I tell you, the Liberal Party said that the only way we're going to get this, uh, we're, uh, the only way we allowed this golf course was if they made a, a proper pathway for us to walk. And they haven't done that. It's been years and to which I was like, hmm, do you think next time around you might want to vote for the party that does, that would do it? And she's like, I don't know if they'll fix it, but I'll think about it. That's a win. She'll think about it. That's a yeah, win. Yeah, but she's also got dementia. <laughs> I don't think that you can convince old people. Really? Well, well my now that we're bringing up old expressions, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You've got years of experience, I think, with that. Well, I was just going to say, like, God bless my mom and her partner, but they saw your show, and I was like, are you going to vote Labour now? And they are like, God, no. Yeah. Like, but it was like an I thoroughly say. enjoyed that. It was very true, everything you said in the last hour of unpacking all the economic myths that I was brainwashed with for 10 years. Are you going to change your vote at all? Well, I, I, look, I'm not a communist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you know, let, let's even... The, look, benefit of the doubt. Let's say... Let's say... 50% of what Jordan said was accurate. Just Let's just say that. Let's just say, you know, secretly Jordan's your pinko commie that overlooks the fact that Labor has Come the colour red. Come closer to the red. mic, miss. Sorry, that Labor has the colour red in their thingy. Because, you know, he's still just living a dream world with this, with this uh, the, the colour scheme. He's just, you're, you're, you're a colour denialist. That's what you are. But, like, even all that at hand, even putting all that out there. <laughs> yeah. Let's say Go on, you're making sense. <laughs> Final. <laughs> Someone saying let's it say, like it say, is. Let's say fifty percent. A color denier is uh, is accurate. That's a still a that's still half of your values that should be challenged. That you should sort of look into or, or you know be open to shifting on. So yes, yeah, Ali. So, <coughs> did it ever occur to you that she might have just been being polite? She was being polite by saying, I'll consider it. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Probably. But and she also was. also thinking in her mind, what a freak. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't know, but she was Why genuinely she pissed off it? about how the government never put up a proper like. Man, it's it's in shambles. Like, there's a tree off the floods. The tree fell <laughs> on whatever <laughs> shitty walkway there was. And every day I have to like fucking jump over it. I'm I'm a relatively young person, so it's easier for me. How long ago were the floods? You're not wrong. No one gives a shit, man. On the other side, the golf course, as right after the uh, the floods happened, they had this. I'm not even kidding. I took my dog out. Like it was, it was raining heavily. They had machines on this golf course that were just like it, I had never seen such a thing. It was like a massive tractor with these brushes on the side that were clearing up all the water that had. Um, accumulated on the court on the golf course, and meanwhile, like the fucking natural park, like there's trees all over the place. It's no one gives a shit till this day. How how long has it been? No one's fucking fixed that tree. Dude, yeah, I've never heard an oral letter to local council. Yeah, I was gonna that say was that mad. was a letter to council. Yeah, it's such a uh, he's, he's, such a he's community problem. About his community. Yeah, you are passionate about. No, his I'm not. I'm I'm passionate about like no, not having to jump it. over no, the fucking. Be, be proud of it. Yeah, and why is there not enough gym match at the YMCA? <laughs> Also, the Bunning the Schnag. The questions of the Friendly Geordies podcast. The Bunning Schnag place was supposed to be making sausages on Sunday, but one Sunday they weren't there. Yeah. Not that I care because I hate Bunning <laughs> I despise them, but I'm thinking about my community. No, look, I... I, I it's, it, it's <laughs> Arlie's, where's the beef? No, you're actually completely right. But the, I you know, wonder whether it is the council's responsibility. It is the. It's definitely the council's responsibility. But the other thing <laughs> is, you know, it's the it's the problem with living in a, a non marginal seat. If you live in a seat that's considered to be liberal safe, they don't kind of, they don't give a fuck about you because they depend on these old people to be like, oh, no matter what, I'll I'll vote liberals. But the council is. A if separate it was a marginal seat, I can tell you they'd be cleaning that shit up. Nah. But because they just take they take like uh, Hughes for granted, even like it's the Craig Kelly seat in National Assembly and uh, what's her fucking name the uh, a liberal MP for my state, um, Melanie Gibbons I think her name is. The only time I fucking hear about her is uh, during election season, uh, sending us pamphlets. Like I've never seen her campaign ever in she my life. She doesn't need to do that. She should save the money. Yeah, that's what she's doing. Isn't They're saving or at the least money. cut down the trees that are blocking the path to make those pamphlets. Just do <laughs> something. But <I'm laughs> the only thing that they do, <laughs> the only thing my electorate does is like rework <laughs> the roundabouts or something. You know, they'll close down a road and they'll make a roundabout basically look exactly like it was before. Fuck yeah. And that's the only development that happens over there. Like, but it's all about different? road and shit that like... People like you know people that get pissed off about on their daily commute, but when it comes to like just preserving the natural stuff, the habitat, making a walkway, people's welfare, um, none of that. No one gives but a shit. When did you start caring about local issues? When I started taking my dog out for a walk and I have to fucking jump over that tree every day. And That's I swear, a good point. this is I still think it's coincidental with the fact that you're nearly thirty. Yeah, it's true. true. And I, remember, I swear, at that age. I swear, like yeah. the for like now, like it's been what fifteen <laughs> days or some shit. Whenever I do it, I always think the same thing. It's like I fucking thought I left Pakistan <laughs> 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 because that sort of shit happened over there, and you'd be like, dude, fix the road. You know, it's been three years. But wait, aren't council bipartisan? Like councils? No, just a they bunch get elected. Nah. They got affiliations with everyone, man. Like as in they've got affiliate and that But they don't have the colour blue or the colour red. They're not they don't have an actual uh Some local councils do, but yeah. others are independent. Yeah, independent. But they're not independent. So is his independent? I don't know if he's his independent. Oh, shit. There's a new there's a new poll. Abolish local councils. I agree with that. Don't abolish. Yeah, them. I uh, thanks so. God. <laughs> they suck. Such an awful idea. No, what dude, did you just miss? fix them, the set them targets. I hate like councils. straight up, dude. You you should know more than anyone that the councils are the most corrupt sect of the Australian public service. That's true, but come on, man. Garbage disposal is pretty rad. That's all you got. Yeah, it's though. sick. That's all you got. <laughs> yeah, but it's also the biggest medical advancement in human history. All right, yeah. Let's not revert back to ancient Babylon. How about? <laughs> Someone else? How about this? How about the lollipop man does it? 
We just up their wage. No, pay the just think the local council pays that guy. Oh. Just hold the local council the accountable. Is that is that too tough? Just give them targets. Well, it Make is actually too tough. Yes, it you is know too what? tough. The one thing that your I problem do isn't think unique. Every council, every council, Lane Cove Council is one of the worst. Again, a safe seat. I'm telling you, marginal seats don't have this issue. Yeah. No, I'm telling you, no, Lane Cove was shit. Did. Lane Cove Council was shit. Mismanagement, misspending. Crap. I think factually, Gosford Council is the worst. No surprises there, <laughs> Fact, dude. That place looked like <laughs> that place looked like uh, like Ecuador when we went. It did. It looked like fucking Ecuador mixed with that Aussie flair of one of those going out of business rug warehouse. Sales. Yeah, kebabs two for one. Can yeah. I yeah, suggest so none of the something. class of the country you just mentioned? That's <laughs> gospel. Can I suggest something? <laughs> and I will not tell you where this uh, plan comes from because you will automatically hate it. Then, God but damn it! One of the ways that you can fix local councils is mm. that you constantly do surveys. Uh, with the people living Wonder over where there. where this comes from. <laughs> and, hmm. and basically, stop it, don't tell them. Because then they'll hate it. Just listen to the idea. And then like you get all, all these <laughs> compilation of all the survey results. So then you'll know, like, because most people don't lie about that stuff. They'll be like, okay, are your roads clean? True. Are your, uh, uh, is your local park clean enough? What are the issues? And then you basically set local council targets depending <coughs> on what results you get. So you say these responses, let's say the average response is, Six out of ten. If you don't get it to eight out of ten in the next two years, you're fired. It's not a bad. It's not a bad system. It ain't bad. Mm. I'm willing to extend an olive branch here because at the moment, I assume the CCR stands for Credence Clearwater Revival (laughs) Country. See, there is a lot of wisdom in country and folk music. (laughs) 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 No, but really. We got to do something because, <clears throat> sure, like your version of a of a corrupt council is like, you know, a walkway not being built and like trees in your path, and the Lane Cove version is like, hey, we're too flash with money. Just knock down the town hall and rebuild it. But they're both corruption. They're both forms of corruption. Sure, ours is more. Well, like mine is like literally is apathy, man. Mine is like honest. My council is just like apathetic to that area. Because anyone that goes to that particular park is not someone that... They're more concerned about the people that are playing golf inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And and so that's the... Like, those guys matter to them. They're the big money makers. They contribute to most tax. They are, like... That's what a liberal party wants everyone to be. Mm. The people on the other side that are walking are, like, people from, like, that aged care facility, which, for some reason, votes for them. But they're... According to, like, for, from the liberal point of view, they're leeches. They're not doing anything. They just suck on welfare. So who cares about now you've changed that you're, like, 85 game. years old and you can't jump over a fucking five-foot log? Yeah. Just go home. Could you? Could we elect our councillors? Would that work? You can, I think. You pretty, you, I'm sure you Yeah, I think that's how can. elections That's work. how it works. No, but we don't do that. Yes, we do. Uh, we do it, like, based we're on the... You don't do it, <laughs> and that's illegal. Another thing to add to the list. Yeah. At this point, I'm a fucking There's A lot of fugitive. talking about what our weed habits are on this <laughs> and how we <laughs> shirk basic civic duties, <laughs> even under pain of law. Look, I'm not going to lie. We still refuse to participate. <laughs> That's how corrupt it is, man. Well, I'm not going to lie. I did read in the comments that someone was like, what if we voted the councillors in? I'm like, this guy's talking shins. <laughs> uh, someone did just say What's that. his name? Milky, milky, butt, butt. Uh... All right, look. I can't uh, find it. Well, I can't find look, it. I think we've but made. But you know what, man? <coughs> this Keating script that Ali and I have been cooking up. Damn, you're doing it too? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah he's sick. He's fact checking a bunch of stuff and. Uh, script. Taking a side pretty much so I can have arguments with Christo instead of doing any work that lasts half a day. Half a day. <laughs> half a day. It was amazing. He's not exaggerating. Did you film it yesterday? I should have filmed that argument. It was oh. that was the sign to behold. I was sitting here just delirious, and I thought I was watching Oth- Othello. And you know what's insane? What other workplace <coughs> on earth do you think that the workplace would be having a heated argument that almost resulted in fisticuffs? Yep. Over the privatization of the Commonwealth Bank that happened thirty years ago. <laughs> That's <crazy>. so <laughs> insane. 
The only cunt working was the <laughs> delirious one on cold flu. Pitch. Yeah. Just being like, you can use and, and, and what was your job again? Looking through pedestrian articles and going, hmm, pretty shit. Yeah. So is that one. Hey, I just thought of something. Pedestrian is pretty bad all around. That's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's well, it. I've got a headache. You're I'm going lucky home. he came <laughs> to that conclusion because he would just be like, hey, these guys aren't that bad. They cover <laughs> bands sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Howdy. Ah, the greatest artists of all time. Who the fuck's that? I don't know. <laughs> Who's Halsey? Paul. Do you know Paul. Halsey? Do you know Halsey? Is that our old music teacher from school? <laughs> Mr. House. <laughs> the guy's like, look at this photograph to Bunnings the other day. What? Doing that Nicholas Cage at eight millimeter thing of don't film me. <laughs> <laughs> what did that happen? Yes, it did. What? But uh, <coughs> we really are getting off track here, which is that I have another opinion <coughs> that I know is going to get clipped up. Oh, for fuck's and sake. Oh. everyone's going to attack me vigorously for Wait, it. Hi, Panthera. Put it on us. The thing to Panthera, us, yeah. pan, Pantera, Panthera, Pantera. And I can't believe that I learnt this from the Packy Commie. Oh, but shit. Packy advertising commie. the Commonwealth Bank was mad. In fact... It was the maddest thing that Paul Keating did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm taking away that your conversation with Krista was, you thought it was mad. Because I didn't know how to, I couldn't tell you what you thought. Oh, so it was <laughs> like you reading Othello in year 12. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah, didn't yeah. understand what was going on. Yeah. Sounded passionate. <laughs> but I, I genuinely believe that too. <laughs> like, Do you? So you know yeah. what? Well, well, I don't know, you know if it's what? the Get best me. thing he ever did, Get but like it was... <laughs> I think it was a very good thing. But just before just we get like into Shakespeare, it. you say it's the best thing you ever did for dramatic effect. A dramatic but effect. But before we get into it, just so I get the crux of it. So he privatized it. Uh, now nah, you're going to have to help me out. He privatized <laughs> it for a reason. I'm getting something here. A reason. He basically Holy shit. He Miss Love Bella Bradgick, political medium. <laughs> he prop- that is you. <laughs> You are a psychic man that sits on a political podcast and have no right being there and you sit around guessing what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to guess <laughs> that uh, wasn't it essentially like uh, he, he decided to give them money to prop them up to, uh, to, to make it profitable again? Is that right? No, it was Not somewhat close. profitable. It was profitable. So he gave them... Taxpayer money. But that's why you privatize it. I think... Wait, 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 wait. Before we get into this, I just want to know from the audience, <clears throat> what do you think about that? Yeah, thing give that us... that happened, I'm guessing, a decade before you were born. Yeah, give us your views on... Miss Love uh, is Do you think the Silicon Commonwealth Valley. Bank should have been privatized or not? But if you just pitch it as that without giving them facts, then obviously they're going to say... So yeah. Keating privatized it. Yeah. In phases. Mm. But look, I can talk, I can go on and on about like why I think it was the right move. What was the argument? What was the crux of the argument? Go on. What was the crux of the I argument? Mean, dude, the, I think the, the general sentiment of the audience is I have no opinions on stuff before 1991. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> and and they're, they're right. But Ooh, honestly. So close. It was 1988. If, no, wait, didn't it happen in 1991? It happened. So he's wrong. His yeah. plans were in 88, moved to 91, yeah. finished in 96. Yeah, that's right. So what was, uh, the, what was the argument about? CBA was money bags. They took over the Bank of Melbourne, which was bankrupt. If Keating did it, it was a good idea. <clears throat> If Paul Keating did it, I'm all for it. Dude, I don't Hell think anyone yeah. gives a shit. They just don't know the facts. Like, on the surface, no, this is a, what was look, the let argument? Just, well, let me just paint you the picture because every boomer that knows what's up in the world, which is pretty much Ali at 18, <laughs> yeah, they are correct on a lot of things in that they really understand how the global sphere really works. But when it comes to the national level, it's always the same thing of... Uh, Paul and Keating were just Thatcher and Reagan. No, they weren't. First of all, they were much more handsome. Uh, Reagan was pretty good. <laughs> Gotta know. Then again, I'd plow Thatcher. I'd, <laughs> I'd give her one. But uh, oh, Panthera, no. Panthera. Actually, yeah, Panthera. Is that Panthera? Panthera. 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 Panthera? <laughs> Panthera? Oh, it's a Panthera. I love. I, love <laughs> I like how Panthera is my condom to Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's so good. It's just like the the. Like that, uh, so the trigger word that we just blanket say. Like this is Seinfeld. It's Panthera. Yeah, Panthera. Paul, would you do Thatcher? Oh, <laughs> come on. And nah. if you're a chick, 
Who's hotter, Keating or Hawk? Dead Thatcher, would you do mm. hmm? Reagan. necrophiliac? Do you mean like have oh, sex with her now? Uh, wasn't going that far. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you always have to take it to that next packy level, don't you? Yeah, I know. Just take it. To- Wait, why is that packy level? I don't level? know. I don't know. Hey. I'm guessing that there's more cases of necrophilia in Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's more ghosts, so... You know what? Look up the stats. They're probably... Uh, first of all, I know of... Like, not personally, but I used to Fuck. read them in the newspaper. No. Like, The Undertaker was like... Uh, would Let's get... Let's say... Get, w- w- they arrested a guy who would get hanky-panky with fresh corpse. Oh... No, not fresh. I just no, don't know how that. you do it. Well, I don't know. The uh, body would be rotting. I, no. God, and you would have to, first of all, dig it up, too. Uh, no, no, no. He was a mortician, wasn't he? Oh, I don't know about that. Mortician. I think he dug, God, he they dug would it have up. to be fresh. I think and none of that hillbilly. Up. I got a possum off the side of the road. Just three days. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, that's and good yeah. anyone that's worse. fresh should always be smacked by a bus as well. Uh, yeah. I don't want to... You don't like that? No, I don't like it. Heart I attack. All intact. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> panthera, panthera, that was too I think fucked. that deserves a panthera. That, was that deserves fucked. a panthera. Yeah, that's it. It's just like, it's almost like a, it's almost like a tip of the hat, isn't it? It's like, yeah, panthera, man. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, sir, was a good panthera. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are we talking about? We're again? talking you, necrophilia. You, that's no, right. you're, no, no, no. You brought up yeah, something Keating very similar. Banking in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, this is a fucked pod. <laughs> I don't think this is as big as much of a hot <laughs> button issue. Uh, Sorry, I don't <laughs> think this is nearly as much of a hot button issue as you think it is. No, it's a hot button issue with people that are seventy. It's a hot button issue in this office. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I know. That amazes. <laughs> I can it was tell the hottest much. button issue. It was the hottest I've ever seen. I don't seen think I've ever place. been in a more heated argument with Connor and Krista. Nah. I loved every second of it. I think all of us enjoyed it. Mm. It really did remind me of when Keating, people used to say about Keating, and look, everybody thinks he was passionate about the economy. Keating was just passionate about arguing. There was two flies on the wall. He would argue just as vehemently about which fly was going to fly off that wall as he would about floating the dollar. Damn. Right. Um, But Likes to fight. Likes the fight. And, uh, yeah, but anyway. Wait, Christo? Uh Huh? (laughs) Paul Keating. Sorry, go on. Well, they do have that in common. They do, yeah. I wouldn't say you guys enjoyed it that much. I think it was getting to a point where I was like, No, but I like being in those wog moments of like, you fuck her, my mum. I fuck her, you're the man. (laughs) He was was prepared to leave. I can't believe that this was what is... I, I didn't know that it was that heated. It's there was, there was such a non issue. It's just hilarious. Threats of leaving. What? Not the business, just the, the, the office. Because look, look, they Christo commonly- maintains that he was correct on the issue. And I don't want to say what his <laughs> position was, but I truly think that we were really arguing what came first, the chicken or the egg. And I took the egg position and he took the chicken position. It was such a stupid way to waste <laughs> half a day. But having said that, but why, I really why? feel like it was just, uh, that's another day in the office here. But I'm curious what his, <laughs> fucking, what his opinion is. All right, was. I'm going to try and be in as objective as possible, knowing that he's not here. <laughs> oh, this is going to be so hard because I'm so worked up about it now. <laughs> uh, all right, so we were going through uh, the script. And remember the point that you were saying that uh, the Commonwealth Bank was acting like a private institution, so why are we paying their wages? Yeah. Now, his point was, it was turning over a profit, so who cares that we were paying their wages? It was turning over a profit. My point was, yeah, but we're still paying their wages. His point was, oh, my God, you're such a spastic. I'm filming this. I'm going to leave. Oh, my God, I can't <laughs> believe this. You're insane. You're insane. Say it again. Say it again. Operational costs are a thing. What the fuck? What the fuck? It's a profitable company. What the fuck are you talking about? But I think that if I if I go back and look at it, he was right in that that is not enough of an argument to privatize it, that you are paying their wages. It was profitable. 
But it was a sidetrack point that we were focused. That's why I'm saying it was just such a stupid thing to focus on because it was just that a back and forth for three hours, getting more and more manic. But and I, I think that both of us were right. Can no. I just and we were arguing over who's more right? Can I just say something about that in particular? A government's metric for privatizing something is if it's profitable. If it is profitable, that's when you privatize something. Mm -hmm. Because look, as much as this is going to sound like a shock, but we aren't the CCP. Our our job is like a government's job in Australia isn't to run businesses. It's supposed to run certain businesses that are going down. So like at the same time, Keating didn't uh, didn't privatize Telstra at that point because Telstra was not super profitable and wouldn't have been able to survive. Something like Australia Post, I actually, here's another good thing. Something like Australia Post today, which is still majority government owned. But do you know why the government still owns it? Runs Be at a loss. There's little stamps. Because, look, the Austra <laughs> if you look at Australia, right? Aust yeah. Aust and those shit chocolates at the front that are only <laughs> sold at Australia Post that have pictures of bilbies on them. Yeah, I love but it's, those. It's, like, it's a monopoly for a reason. Because Bilbies. It, the the population of Australia is only 25 million people. It's a huge continent. And a lot of these people live in areas that is not currently economically feasible to deliver to. Mm. Right? It's, it's, if you get a private company and be like, okay, now you start, you get all of Australia and you need to develop uh, deliver things to Northern Territory, all of that stuff, they wouldn't be able to do it because it would not make economical sense. The only economical sense for shipping right now in Australia is within the metro areas. And so what the government essentially does, it subsidizes people that live in tier threes, people that live in regional areas. Jordan, we do it too. We subsidize them people. Cause like, look, if you look at our merch to sales, right? the shirts that we sell, we charge a single amount for shipping. That shipping applies to someone that lives in Northern Territory. It also applies to someone that lives in Newtown, which is right next door. And as always, the farmers are getting a free ride. <laughs> yeah, but, but what we do it. We, we get the you people... Frick. We get people from like living in urban centres to pay slightly more than what they're supposed to pay so that we can subsidise people that live in fucking Tari and shit. So we do it on a micro level as well. Yeah. I'll just add, I'm not happy about that. But I'm, I'm very happy about that. Shout out Tari. So Australia Post for that reason remains government because if you privatize it, it's going to be a net loss for the public. But when you've got, uh, when you've got corporations <laughs> that can survive on their own, then that is an incentive to privatize them and not... And that is true, but I will add this as well. If the service is necessary then you shouldn't privatise it, That's even true. if it's profitable, which would be something like the electric grid, electric utilities, water. These things would be profitable if you privatise them. Everybody yeah, but needs you water, want so but you don't want to do that. That's true too. But Qantas is not necessary. Yeah, Qantas, or even for that uh, Commonwealth Bank, because you've got, a mono, you've got a government bank. It's called the RBA. Like, no one is privatising the RBA. Commonwealth Bank was... So th this is the context. Uh, maybe, like... We'll keep it for the script, but the context was that uh, in 1991, Keating started privatizing Commonwealth Bank because, first of all, Australia was in a deep recession. It was what he called the recession we needed to have. You had unemployment that was nearing 10 to 11 percent, and at the same time, you had a ballooning debt. Australia was facing uh, stagnation, which is at the same time your inflation was going high and your unemployment was going high. Then you had a lot of these public assets that they looked at the metric that the Labour Party under Keating used of why uh, if something should be privatized or not is that they asked one simple question. If we back away from this, would it be able to survive? If it was able to survive, privatize it. If it wasn't able to survive, then you can't privatize it, which is why Telstra wasn't privatized at that point, but Commonwealth Bank was. Commonwealth Bank, on the other hand, so the reason, so there were a few things that were happening. One was that there were new regulations in the banking industry, which meant that in order to commercially give these loans, you needed to have a larger equity pool. And because Commonwealth Bank was government owned, their equity pool would have come from the government. Equity pool means care, money. Care, money. And so they would, so Keating was saying that this is going to be something that we would have to allocate in the budget. And because we would have been the ma the majority shareholders, like the gov Australian gov uh, Australian public, then we would have had to give in that uh, funds. On the other hand, the flip was that if you sell a profitable institution like the Commonwealth Bank, guess what? You get more money. Th selling things that are going at a loss, you get less money. So you would want to first make it profitable to sell it. And then he used that money during a recession to affect things like 
reducing unemployment rate. Uh, he one of the other things that he used the money for was uh, setting up um, basically uh, uh, on practical training for uh, apprentices and shit, so that their uh, their skills are more relevant for their workplaces. So making them more employable. And reducing the fucking debt that was going insane during stagflation. Like, I don't understand when would be a better time to do it. Yeah. The only downside, I suppose, is I do agree with the boomers in that he sold it for way too little, but it was an emergency. And I think that the other point is when people are always saying it was profitable, why would you sell something that's profitable? Well, I'll tell you why. Because as soon as the Commonwealth Bank didn't have this attitude of, what, we're not drowning, so we're doing a good job. And they had this lazy bureaucratic thing of just like only insuring, uh, you know, backing loans that were absolutely guaranteed to turn a profit to them. As soon as they were privatised, they had to kill what they eat. So they started approving way more loans. And as a result of approving way more loans, businesses doubled as a result of Hawke and Keating. On population trajectory, we were expected to have about a million businesses by now. But we have two million small businesses alone. That is because they upped how much domestic investment was here by tenfold, meaning there was so much more money getting thrown into the economy that then moved on to businesses flourishing that at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, you could have a profitable bank or you could have a million extra profitable businesses paying tax. Yeah. So it was just insane to me. Like, when I understood that point, I really don't get the point of all the boomers because they just stop at it was profitable. That's their end game. But so, so wait, wait, what's the end game? So the end game is anything that's profitable, the government does not sell it. So the government essentially becomes a major capitalist. Is that, is that the point? So, like, basically, the government should be Rupert Murdoch. Especially because they sold it off to start up a bunch of programs that aren't profitable. Because they were that's going to help what the a government is supposed it, to do. It helped the country in two ways. It helped the country build a bunch of businesses that could build a bigger tax revenue pool that they could then uh, collect, which is essentially what happened because they doubled the GDP. But... The other way that it helps the country out is that by selling it, they set up all those educational programs and inc- increase the skill and education level of the country. Yes. And then the Liberals privatised a lot of those. And, and like I said, I can't... <laughs> but they be- shouldn't have privatised those. Yeah. And like I said, I can't believe I'm saying this, but we're not the fucking CCP. We are not going to... We're not... Why like not? The government is not a massive business person because that really fucks shit up. If the government is handling so many of these companies, their interests get diverted. A government job isn't to make business money. A government job is public service. Mm. And so once you like, if you expect your government to be like also making most of the money in your economy, then you're living in fucking North Korea. You're Mm. not living in a free society Mm. because then government, then these people will have their own vested interest. Mm. And so they're not going to be able to govern you effectively. Anyways, that's, but also, there's Separation another sick thing. Powers. I've got a book uh, by Jack Lang called The Great Bashed. And it has that classic picture on the front of him doing his little auction pose, being like, yeah! mm-hmm. And it's about the Depression. And he's pretty much arguing the entire de- book that this is all the Commonwealth Bank's fault. I swear to God, he's definitely got an axe to grind because they did kick him out of office. But this is the other reason that you privatise it. Because before Keating opened up banking in this country, The big four used to sit around as this old boy cabal and actively campaign against Labor governments. Now, because they have so much competition from your ING directs and your Bank New Zealand, I assume, (laughs) right? They they actually have to act more professionally. They don't have time to sit around and think, yeah, how do we out Andrews? Yeah, they don't have have to think about, fuck, we need to hit the next quarter. I think that what he envisioned, which was a lot better than the current circumstances, which it's always the same thing because people always say the same thing about the Commonwealth Bank that they say about the ABC, which is just put in better people. Yeah, it's not like the Liberals can do that, can they? Especially when they're in government 70% of the time. They can't put their own guys in there. Mm. Mm. What the Labor Party does, and this is Keating's entire political philosophy, is how do I make sure that the Liberals can do the least amount of damage when they're back in power? And one way of doing that 
was to privatise the Commonwealth Bank because it just allowed there to be so much more capital circulating around and couldn't have this protection monopoly racket that was occurring. Then the Liberals came in and started loosening all the regulation that he put on this new private, large, global banking enterprise on this country. So that started to screw things up a bit. But still, the reason that we avoided the GFC is because of Keating's reforms like the four pillar thing. So it's not like the guy did it willy-nilly because he believed in neoliberalism or whatever the fuck it is. Mm. Like, the guy was a lot more complicated than that. He didn't have mm. ideologies. He was a truly practical man that was constantly thinking about what works best. That's true. And that was just a teaser. If you want more details on Paul Keating, there's well, going to be yeah. a video coming out soon. That's true. Re-visit also, them. are you interested in that? Because that is all it's going to be. And <laughs> if I get enough likes, I will also be doing a historical case for why the Commonwealth Bank should have been privatised in the 20s. <laughs> I really do want to read the great I, bars. I, I, I the wrong business. I should be working at Bananas in Pajamas, dude. What am I doing here? Can you work at Bananas in Pajamas? I think I can handle it. I suppose it's government run. Why couldn't I? Because you were born for that. Have we told this story on the podcast? Probably. What? You know how your dad was describing communism? How he was saying, it was so bad. Yeah. I had to get up at 4 a.m. Don't come say to work at like 7 a.m. Yeah. And then everybody slept. Yeah. Why didn't we start nine to fives? I, I had to go home at 3 p.m. and do art for eight hours. It was very <laughs> 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 But the best story of that is his dad was there one day and he was just talking about how lazy it was. So they'd forced them to do a bunch of projects they didn't want to do, which I did like about communism. So instead of them going, but I want to make a building with a stripe down the middle of it. No, you have to build a sewer. This is a dystopia. So they forced him to do a sewer. One of his workers screwed up the sewer so much (laughs) that it was unusable. It was a billion dollar investment. (laughs) Unusable. (laughs) <laughs> and he walks up to him. They're on the same level as employees. They go, hey, what the fuck you do? You fuck my mother. I kill you, you motherfucker. And his boss, the guy was asleep, by the way. He shakes him out. <laughs> he work. was asleep at work. At he shakes work. him out. Be like, what the fuck you do? And his boss, who's next to him, is also asleep. And then he just goes, hey, don't you? The man is trying to sleep. He's up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, what a workplace. Stories. And you're always saying that you hate communism. You would have no, thrived in that environment. I don't buy you and Christo's <laughs> you autistic now. fucking perspectives on that. That's bullshit. I like the American flag waving in the wind. That looks cool. I to me. That uh, speaks to the poetic side of you, but the <laughs> no. practical side of how you operate is having a siesta at 9am in the but morning. But that's not communism. That's just, uh, you know what that is? That's that's how the Spaniards live. That's just Spanish culture, right? Maybe I should yeah, even they're a little Spain. more practical than that. Don't they have it at two? Yeah, they do. God damn. Spain in Croatia, eh? <laughs> now that's a lazy country. <laughs> well, could I just be like... A musician and lay, lounge around in a communist country. I, I think you, you can. can. I think everyone has to become a musician because oh, right, right. So when you you've can't. got like nothing to do and you've got some money coming in, I guess explore the arts. You know, maybe you can, but you would have to be in a white suit wearing a fez <laughs> with one of those onion-shaped guitars, <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be on TV. <laughs> And, and let's actually, be honest, that's a better look for you anyway. White loafers? White loafers, of course. <laughs> and All every right. song is about how sick spring is. <laughs> <laughs> Soviets love music. They like music that goes, yegading, yegading, right? Yeah, so learn yeah. how to do that music. And you like that music as well. Yeah, I don't mind. All right, okay. Uh, we've got two more segments. <laughs> thinking, we're uh, thinking. We're strapped for time. But the f- okay, let's go for a light one. Uh, Miss... This is how fucked the investment market is. Talk about mm-hmm. banks. Mm-hmm. A U.S. local deli, which is now in New talking. Jersey, yeah. which is making thirty-five thousand U.S. dollars in sales a year, yeah. is currently valued at a hundred million dollars on the stock market. How? How? <laughs> Just they must have the best pastrami in Jersey. Is they that don't it? even apparently. 
the guy who has uh, uh, an asset that's worth $100 million in the stock market Just is the CEO, up. CFO, slash everything O, and is also like a wrestling coach at the <laughs> neighboring school. What, is it like his game stuff? It's a bit like his game stuff. The other thing is like the location of the deli is valuable. But not a hundred million dollars valuable. So, the, so the so the game just continues under Biden, eh? I thought Wall Street well, was going to yes. bloody get regulated. They'd all pull it, their socks up. <coughs> Wasn't that, he put in by Wall Street? <laughs> 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 Shit, too woke. God damn it. Yeah, but anyway, that was just a fun fact. Fuck. That's just how shit the did U.S. Trump, stock market. Did they like is. Trump or did they like Biden? I'm not sure. They like Wall Trump. Street. They initially they both. initially wanted Hillary in, but when Trump oh, came, really? he was like, "I'm not hating on that." Mm. And oh. then uh, when Biden was coming in, they were like, "Yeah, I guess he's all right too." Because like no one was really anti them if you look at it. Right. <laughs> so either way, they would have been dude, fine. You know what, Ali? You might be interested in this. This Perini book that I'm reading, which is the greatest. It's like that book was written specifically for me. It's about ancient Rome <laughs> and it's nothing but red pills. But there was something called tribunes back then. Pretty much, if you imagine, this isn't exactly accurate because it's not the same system, but they kind of had two presidents and then they had two presidents that represented poor people. So they were kind of just school captains, I suppose. They didn't really have any power. But... <clears throat> What happened in that system was that there was that elite oligarchic class, I suppose the Wall Street of the day, which would have been landowners, and they used to pretty much patron who were going to be the tribunes. Now, isn't this interesting? Every now and then, one of the tribunes who was supposed to represent the plebs would be a Bernie Sanders figure and actually be talking about issues that the plebs liked, and they got in and usually they were assassinated. But... Most of the time, the tribunes that were running for office, it sounded exactly like the Democratic primaries. It was just a line of dudes sitting around saying, I have leadership skills and I have attained this office in the past. I know what it takes mm -hmm. to be in charge. It was nothing about policy. It was all about their character. And I never noticed that before, but then I started thinking back to it and I was like, damn, Bernie Sanders was one of the Gracky brothers. He was actually sitting there just being like, the tomato tax is too <laughs> low. We need to start putting up taxes on foreign fruits such as potatoes and possibly yams. <laughs> Foreign foods coming from Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> potato capital. Yeah, potato capital. <laughs> but, um, that's but, fucking but funny, dude. Do you, well, well, so <clears throat> are you saying that that was fucked or did you like that? It's just, Observation. I'm going to be doing a stand-up show on it. It's just going to be called A Game as Old as Rome. And it's pretty much just going to be about how much of a farce democracy is. And it's the same ideals, just getting repeated over and over. What do the ruling elite constantly care about? Freedom, liberty, other flowery concepts that make you think about how sick statues and flags are. Yes. Eagles. But there was no substance. In fact, Julius Caesar, isn't this incredible? Everyone was saying he's such a great orator, and he was. He, he had flair. But there was a new style of oratory that started around the time that he entered public life. You know what that oratory was? Stating facts. It was just him saying... Okay, the Treasury allotted 2 million denarii for infrastructure last year and only 100,000 denarii was spent on infrastructure. Where did the other 1.9 million denarii go? And all throughout Rome's history, they had such a clinch hold on power that everyone was just speaking about, again, poetic, bullshitty concepts of like, is tyranny bad? What about liberty? And that's the <laughs> thing that drives me crazy about politics today. It's the same thing. It's just these annoying little terms that they constantly debate over. That's political discussion. Mm. The spectrum is very limited. Yeah. Yeah. I deny so about that. It's just amazing that it's just this concept. <laughs> that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I said, I deny about that. But I am excited for the show. Don't know what you're trying to replace with Denari. It's Don't. too vague. He does not yeah, know. This guy, all right? Don't. He understands Cicero debate. <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, go on. That's cool, though. But you know what else was really sad? <laughs> Sorry, just uh, as a little teaser. 
I think I'm even going to finish the stand-up show on this. It's just so moving. But there was a hundred years before the olig- of you know some tribune every now and then coming up and saying we really need to reform land or something like that and getting huge popular support. And then usually what would happen is the senators that ran the show would get some of their trained gladiators to come to their house and kill them. Uh, that's usually what happened. Damn. So there was the Gracchi brothers. They were some of the first reformers and they met that fate. And so did Julius Caesar, but that was obviously in the Senate. And think about this picture, Ali. You know that classic ancient artwork of Julius Caesar getting stabbed? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you think about that painting, what do you think about it? Um... Why are all the penises so small? <laughs> There's no penises there, dude. <laughs> Sorry. You're looking through the robe. No, no, I'm just You're think- obsessed. I'm just thinking a, a, a leader, a worthy leader being killed by a horrible penises. evil men is, is what I think. Do you? Yeah, that's what I think, yeah. Because both Miss and I, we were just thinking about that painting and we were just being like, finally, a tyrant is brought to justice. Yeah, a tyrant no, no, I, being killed. Look at his But that's what I used face. to always think before I read this book. Me too. Um, <clears throat> that's but all yeah, talk. obviously, look, Ali is a lot more woke on these. Oh, but I don't even you know much. That. Like, you know about this era way more than I do. This is just like... But this is the un- thing. I know about that era, but I know about it from the ruling class's perspective because that's all that's written down. It's always just friends of the senators that were the historians. Mm. And so everything that you read about Caesar is he was evil. He was a tyrant. What was he trying to do? He was trying to make sure that apartments didn't collapse in on themselves and that they were subsidised for collapsing in on themselves. So there was actually an incentive to make sure the buildings collapsed. You know, it wasn't uh, insane things that he was proposing. Jesus. What a tyrant. Truth. I know. <laughs> But you know what I do? You mentioned uh, on Mental. one of the previous pods about you thinking of doing a stand up on this topic, and uh, I can tell you there was a lot of uh, overwhelmingly positive opinions on that. They were people were excited, including my girlfriend was like, "I really, really want to go to that show" because she was listening. That so time. do I. I want to so see my I. own show. So do I. Sorry to sound a bit narcissistic, but to quote Kanye West, my only regret in life is that I can't watch me performing <laughs> that show. I really <laughs> want to see it. And it's not even the next one coming out. Sorry, guys. 2023, stay posted. Isn't that amazing? She's three shows ahead. That's, yeah. You're making us look cool. bad, dude. Well, I, I don't hey, think it takes shit. much. Huh? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, look, I, I just want to just get this because it's just so moving. But when Julius Caesar was stabbed, just to show you, even – this is the other thing. They're so in their own bubble that they don't understand that what they're writing shows that they're cunts. So they were saying that after they died, the – triumphant senators walked out and did their big speech about why they had to kill the tyrant. And isn't this insane that even back then you could kill a senator and no one could touch you because they'd be saying it to a crowd and there'd just be 3,000 gladiators standing around menacingly with swords. Really? So they'd say that to him. The next day, one of his generals came up and did a fiery speech and got all of the plebs to go fucking ape shit. They went in... They took, how symbolic is this? They were really moving people back then. They went out, they, they ripped all of the chairs out of the Senate, the doors. They went to the courts because the courts were just rife with corruption. And they took all of the wooden podiums from that. They made a huge bonfire and they burnt Caesar's corpse there. That was ma- named Holy Land. Caesar, when he died, gave every head of a family 75 denarii and made his... Uh, estates public parks for everyone so even in death he was looking out for them and isn't this so sad in the fire all these women were throwing in their bracelets they were poor they were re- unbelievably poor people throwing in their bracelets and their soldiers were taking off all their medallions and throwing it into the fire and the same thing happened when the Gracchi brothers died their land was named as sacred the peasants who had no money at all got all of the little fucking scraps that they had together as a city to build a couple of statues of the brothers. And every year, right up until the fall of the empire, the plebs would go and give them the first fruits of the season and put that at the, at the <coughs> statue. Honorable Isn't that people. moving? And then 
when it came to all of the big figures that you hear about in the late stage republic that were the heroes, your Cados, your Pompeys, your um, your, your Ciceros, they had to build their own statues with their own will estates. No one ever gave them any fruits. They were constantly vandalised. <laughs> and then they would always just write that down in history of just being like, they don't have respect for great men. But they yeah. did have respect for great men. They had respect for Caesar and the Gracchi brothers. Mm. Fuck. It's crazy. Do you, do you remember when we went to, this sort of reminds me of that, when we went to, when we were in Pakistan, we went to that mosque in Islamabad, mm. <clears throat> that uh, weird spaceship looking one. Mm. And then right next to that mosque was a mausoleum of uh, a dictator, General Ziaul Haq, who was like the, the ruler, scariest man I've ever seen in my man. life. And you know, you know what the uh, what the funny thing is, like <coughs> he was such a feared, uh, just the ultimate kind of power that you can think of. He was usually in Pakistan. We've got like we've always had benevolent dictators. Even our dictators were like, "Don't be mean." Okay, fine. Like they were like they weren't like you know. S- insane dictators they were they were really dependent on public opinion but not this guy he was the only one who who was like a bit of a hard cut he even clearly <clears throat> he even, everyone should look at a picture of that man uh, general Ziaul Haq. he even assassinated like one of the most uh, he hung like one of the most popular leaders anyways he was a different breed and he was a bit insane but the funny thing was like you go to that mosque and right next to his mosque uh, right next to the big mosque where like thousands of people come right to not just pray but to visit because it's like a cool looking mosque from up close not that cool just saying but anyways from a distance it is but so there's the mausoleum no one visits that mausoleum ever and like in the same city you've got like the sufi shrine who no one gave a fuck about when he the 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 guy was alive but you get like thousands and thousands of visitors coming to him every day it just sort of shows you that no matter how powerful you are when you're living what you'll be remembered by is not in your control. And I guess the only way you can control is just be a nice person. That's it. It's people actions. Will, mm. People will g- give a lot more shit. Th- these guys, like that guy, he probably thought he was God when he was alive. And like no one gives a fuck about him. Like mm. I was telling Jordan that even if I go and piss on that <laughs> grave of his, I don't think anyone would give a shit. <laughs> is there soldiers guarding it? No one. You remember, You it looked like, you were like, what the fuck is that? And I was like, yeah, that's one of the most powerful men that this country has ever seen that's his grave no one is even going there yeah yeah it is it is a bit like that it real. i don't know for some reason that just really puts things into perspective doesn't it after you're dead after you're dead what happens to you it yeah. actually just really gives it all the money i, I don't know I, I don't know why that was so i don't know i don't know why that concept's so powerful it but is, anyway, man. that's all I've got to say on it. It's just like when I read that, there was actually tears in my eyes. Dang. It just showed. Well, it is pretty cool. It is, fru- it is really cool. Yeah, it is. Like it's fruit. cool. You know, giving but it But the up. first fruits of the season. That's right. How respectful it's, is that? It's rad. And I, yeah. Actually, let's be honest. The first fruits of the season <laughs> are the worst ones. Are they? Like, <laughs> Look, it's symbolic again. <laughs> <laughs> the that fruit is the message <laughs> of today's pod. Symbolism matters. The fruit I'm just gets thinking better like, towards the end of the season. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, you know, if season was never killed, you, would the Roman Empire still have fallen? Is that too big a stretch? Would he well, be in power today? Damn. <laughs> Super Caesar. I mean, wrong guy. Whatever his name Caesar is. Caesar Salad. Super Caesar salad. <laughs> That'd be the only difference Super today. Salad. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's you no can get such that at sumo salad. There's no <laughs> such thing as a Caesar salad. No, no, it's just a bigger one. Right, right. I got gotcha, you. Gotcha, you had right. to get the big salad. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, look. But do you know, what, is, that, is, that, saying, is that a bit of a stretch? Is it? Well, it was interesting because they always try and blame Caesar for the fall of the Republic, but he was always saying. I don't care if I'm killed, which is why he walked into the Senate despite numerous assassination rumours. But there was always assassination rumours about him. But he was always of the opinion that if I die, it's not so much my life that I care about because I've just done so many great things, so who cares? It's that if I do, it will eventually cause a civil war. It might not be my death that causes the trigger, but you can't squeeze the population that much for Mm. that long. Mm. He was trying, really, this is something else that you learn from this historical piece as well. He was trying to stop the, he was trying to save the oligarchy from themselves. 
Really what he was saying is, it's the same message that the Labor Party's always putting through. Look, you can still be in charge, you just don't have to be such an idiot about it. Mm. You don't understand this. You've just been living in a plush, aristocratic, let's be honest, kind of fancy, luxury, dull bludger life for 10 generations. You're just so stupid from being overfed and, and sitting around eating like uh, pigs that when you open them up, pigeons fly out. <laughs> you don't actually think about things properly. Right. Right? And it was just pretty much like, look, you can make more money and not screw over the population as much. Like, this is a good idea for everyone. Let's divert the River Tiber because it floods the city every year. Mm. But they just, even to those kind of things, they'd be like, no, absolutely not. We can't afford it from Treasury because I wanted to siphon out a billion sesterces this year. So they wouldn't do that kind of stuff. It was What you learn is that there are actually very few men in history that are power hungry. Caesar is one of those people that was power hungry, but why was he power hungry? Because he wanted the power to do things. But most people, when they want power, they just want power because it, it secures their yeah. extra comfy pillow. There's different kinds of power. There's different what you use it for and what you, what you direct that energy into. Yes, yeah. and the oligarchy of every society wants the power so that they can just maintain their plush lifestyle. Mm, mm. Yeah. That's all they care about. My it's just, is, is my Caesar. lawn nice? Me my too. vote's for Caesar now. Yeah. Don't worry. Same. And he is a very comparable man to Bill Clinton. <laughs> don't, don't Both played sax. Because Bill Clinton One played the loot. Was it, uh, what, what, what you, Bill Clinton already said what you <coughs> just came across. Like, you can fool some people some of the time. That wasn't Bill through. Clinton. Wasn't it Bill Clinton? That was Clinton? Lincoln, dude. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess... The second greatest president yeah, of that time. Yeah, 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 Bill yeah. Clinton, Julius Fuck. Caesar, maybe Abraham Lincoln. We're not going to put him on the same category. And Hillary Love Clinton, it. the best president we never had. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, okay. Uh, look, we're almost out of time. We've got five minutes, but like the last thing that I wanted to talk about was um, on the 11th of September, 2021, all coalition forces are moving away from Afghanistan, closing that chapter. I told everyone that Biden was going to be the best president of our lifetime. <laughs> About really time. Did. He's getting a lot of criticism for it. About time. Why? Particularly from uh, what I what I called um, the Aspie argument, which is actually an argument tanks. that Aspie gives, is that they're, they're saying that Biden is foolish for doing this um, because what's going to happen is that once Biden leaves... Basically, China is going to like take control of the region, which is, in my view, not correct. I don't but, think so either. But basically, that's their They're argument. They're saying Africa. that um, if if Biden leaves, <coughs> basically, what they want is, and and this was this article was republished on the Australian as well, taken from Aspie. But what they what they essentially want is for U.S. to permanently be in Afghanistan, just just have a post there forever. So and the and what you get from it is basically uh, less uh, influence of Russia, China in Afghanistan. Let's be honest. Wasn't that the point of them entering in the first place? I don't think that's mm. the. I don't think that was the case because they went in there, and it is true. Look, when they went in there, Afghanistan basically had become a hotbed for terrorist organizations that were hell bent on fucking with the U.S. as much as possible. Now, Afghanistan... Ba ba what, what basically Afghanistan or the Taliban, who were in, in talks with the U.S. government, has assured that we're not going to do that. And the only thing that we ask from you right now is that you fuck off from our country. I, I promise Trump you that I won't on. do that. Trump ran on that. But, then, but the problem is <coughs> they're not promising that um, that they will work with the current Afghan government. And there are fears that, um, that the, the Taliban are going to take over all of Afghanistan again. And then, you know, women's rights and, and all of that stuff. Like, because they are from an orthodox uh, religious uh, ideology. That is not... Wait, don't you think that... Wait, wait, wait. Before you say anything. Go on. Let's yeah. change yes, the camera yes, angle. Yes, yes, yes. Like, you're assuming he's going to say something egregious. Oh, and I am. Oh, okay. Get ready for it. My no, bad. Ready you to know? get cancelled again? You just know every no, time. No, 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 no. I'm not ready to get cancelled. He knows. Should I say it? No, don't say it. 
Paul, do you want me to say what I'm about to say? I'll, 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 I'll say it. I'll say it in a different way. I'll say. It. Uh, yeah, I know what way. you're saying. Where's my bottle of Coke resume. to give you? <laughs> so for all of for all those that think the Taliban is an evil organization oh, and Afghanistan, like the people of Afghanistan, are very against them. I know it. That yeah. is not necessarily true. Taliban represent a particular faction within Afghanistan, which, by the way, are the majority, are the Pashtuns, the the Eastern Pashtuns, who have a very orthodox view of stuff, but are also adversaries to all the other collective ethnicities in Afghanistan uh, that are represented in the current Afghan government and supported by the U.S. So when they say that the people of Afghanistan are against the Taliban... What they're saying is that our faction is against the Taliban. Mm. There is a human, there is a large support base for them, which is why, after decades of bombing them, trying to defeat them, they're still there mm. because they have because they have a bunch of people that like them, and according to some estimates, the majority of the country likes them. So but what I was going to say is that. Uh, Osama bin Laden is the Julius Caesar of our time. Oh, oh, for fuck's no. sake. <laughs> You're such a dick. You're such a dick. Should we end on that? Or? I mean, no, no. <laughs> Might as well. keep going? <laughs> no. But you know what? I've got more. Osama bin Laden was actually just a poster boy. Like, he, he wasn't even that powerful within Al Qaeda. <laughs> so he was not the Julius Caesar. Do you know who was the Julius Caesar of Al Qaeda? A guy called Al Zawahiri. That, yeah, guy I do know that guy was the kingpin. He developed Al Qaeda. He basically used uh, Osama bin Laden as a poster boy because Osama bin Laden was Which handsome. No, he was he was like a the, the story worked really well for them because he was this rich prince of Saudi Arabia who had abandoned all his wealth and was spending it for the cause. So he was just the perfect guy to be at the front of the organization because it motivated others within the organization to be like, hey, look at this guy. He had everything and he's giving it up. Mm. Maybe I should blow myself up and that will help the cause. <laughs> so um, so he was not the Julius Caesar, but... He kind of was. Julius Caesar was from the aristocracy and I suppose he didn't give away all of his wealth. He did when he died. Yeah, well, okay. No, what he is is one We're of the Iraqi brothers him who did do that. Caesar. He did give away all of his wealth and live with the plebs. Mm-hmm. We're not equating but he Caesar to live with the plebs. He lived in a cave. Yeah. Well, he <laughs> lived everywhere. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll come back to, to I'll come back to Afghanistan real there. quick. So this <laughs> is how I'm going to defend Joe Biden mm. because he's getting a lot of hate from all circles, and that's just one Before argument. There are other arguments. Uh, that are also against Joe Biden. Trump's is particularly poignant and intelligent, which is September 11, very sad day, very disrespectful. Very. <laughs> but Trump, Trump was, was the on one. It. Trump, actually, to Trump's credit, Trump was the one who wanted to unilaterally withdraw from Afghanistan. But not on September 11. September not 12, <laughs> maybe. That was a 12, bad 13. choice right there. It's because he's losing his marbles. <laughs> I have I have a few I have a few Very pointers <laughs> for people that have the the against this move view. First of all, the Taliban of early 2000s and late 90s is not the Taliban of today for a few reasons. First of firstly, the Taliban in like the late 90s became so rampant and spread so quickly and took over the entire country because first of all the the country was uh, was coming to terms with the soviet withdrawal and was just in a chaos and a civil war so everyone was fighting everyone else and taliban were the first organization that brought some sort of peace even though that peace meant that you know women weren't allowed to leave the house all of that stuff is bad but they brought some level of peace and what that did was that they started from a city in afghanistan called kandahar and so all of these other cities like kabul and Wherever you were that had some level of Pashtun population, they were like, look, if they can do it in Kandahar, we can do it over here. So the organization developed really quickly, but it was super decentralized because people were just taking the Taliban name because that was the movement of the season. Yeah. Right. So when they did fucked up shit, like, for example, blowing up the Buddhist uh, monuments, which became such big news, the Taliban couldn't 
control them that effectively. Yeah. So you're saying it was the get up of Afghanistan. <laughs> I'm saying it was the get up of Afghanistan. Today, the Taliban is not that decentralized. The Taliban over the years have become super centralized. So what I'm saying mm. is that they're better able to respect their word today than they were back in the day. Yeah. The other aspect of it is that I don't think that China, Russia are going to go back into Afghanistan or like are going to are going to like become the US of the new US of Afghanistan and take over the country. Everyone recognizes that Afghanistan is a fucked place that you don't want to mess with a lot. It is so, the Mordor of the world. Yes, yeah, so I do not think, I think it's a miscalculation yeah. on some of these uh, Western thinkers that China is just going to go over there and take over the country. I think every player in the region genuinely, they, they want to protect their interests, but genuinely wants Afghanistan to be stable. They, I don't think there is one country around them that wants, at this point, wants Afghanistan to be unstable. Aside from... Maybe like Iran currently when the U.S. was there. But once the U.S. leaves, the regional powers will have an incentive to keep it somewhat stable. No one wants a civil war over there again because this, what civil war means is that you get spillover effect in all these regional countries. Do you and think it's also that everyone understands that it's not in their geopolitical interest anymore to control resources? That's what U.S. thinks. The U.S. is like just thinking, I don't know if we want to do this. Like, yeah. what's the point yeah. is is essentially their just argument. Just build more now. naval bases around China, Christ. Yeah, that's, that's what right. they're doing. They're like, so they're, they're just thinking that why... <laughs> Leaning on the flag as well. That's right. All right, we're going to give you the final word. <laughs> <laughs> sick Miss Love is sick. <laughs> And lastly, I think the most important yeah, point yeah, is for us to realize <laughs> that we need to let them figure it out on their own. Duke it out. If, if that's always be. been your opinion of the Middle East. Let them duke it out. Uh, because that's where you... That's how you come up with a long-lasting solution. Mm. Like, if you constantly... <laughs> you know, like... like so, I, I got a cat. And I, I, had, I got a dog and I had a cat. As the, when the first time they saw each other, they started wrestling and fighting. So what we did was we were like, just keep them away. We don't want this. And at some point I was like, just let them duke it out. And then one of them will figure out who's more, who's stronger and who's not. And then there'll be an equilibrium. And that's exactly what happened. So everybody that's always saying that Jordan Peterson doesn't have very woke takes on politics got the wokest take of all. He agrees with packy commies. <laughs> Let children play. That's really what he's saying there. That yeah, is his is point. But I can't put mitten gloves on kids forever because then they become man babies. <laughs> and look at a lot of Saudi men. They are man babies. They are man babies. <laughs> and, and, and the last <laughs> point why I think <laughs> Afghanistan is not going to go back into the same chaos, civil war, hotbed for terrorist organizations like last time is that this time around, every neighboring state, in fact, every state in the world, every country in the world, every Muslim country in the world has realized that using extremist ideology to pursue national interest backfires, mm. which they didn't at the time. Oh. Everyone was using them. And because countries like Pakistan, countries like Iran, all of them had some vested interest in some extremist organization that was taking over the country. Now, countries including Saudi Arabia, has realized that that eventually comes and fucks us back. Yeah. So I don't think the fact that, like, radical Islamist ideology in Afghanistan is not going to have a sugar daddy in some state will, again, force them to look for political settlements. Taliban will take over the country, but that's something that we had predicted. And... Let's be real, the majority of the population should have say in their country too. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. That's probably a good idea. Anyway, so I'm going to... But the real question is, is Fox News or CNN correct in their pronunciation of Afghanistan? Is it Afghanistan or Afghanistan? Afghanistan. Oh, really? All I can remember is that one chick that's really old and very tanned and looks like that she should be a mum on the Gold Coast on CNN, but it's just been like, I've been to Istanbul too many times to go to the Golden Iguana on the Strip. You know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. What the hell are you talking about? 
He's the man that deserves the final word. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Here's final word from Miss Love. Uh, on what? On Maybe that finish subject. off with the Buttsman's final words. The Buttsman? Yeah. Sh- uh, sh- what is this? Is it Sup Motherfuckers? You want me to do it? No, no, no. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, Sup Kanch. So basically... If everyone looks back at it, Trump was the one saying, let's get out of all these fucked countries anyway. So let's get the fuck out. I think George Joe Biden's creepy translucent skin is fucking creepy as much as the next pleb, mate. But I reckon it's about time they get the hell out of there and focus on rebuilding those fucking car factories in Detroit. Anyway... Be good, cunts. Me dick stinks. And I'll see you next time. Peace <laughs> in the Middle East. Peace this in the Middle says. East. See you guys. <laughs>